Morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. I got Mr. Jeffrey Neville in here, Selective Imagery. And uh, before we get started, uh, I'll cut you loose here in a second to introduce yourself, uh, Jeffrey. But remember that next Saturday night, September 3rd, is the next photo review. I've already received one photo. So if you guys want to participate in that, I'm definitely not begging you guys, you do or you don't, but if you want to participate, try to get your photos in no later than Saturday morning, Eastern time, you know, sometime in the morning. Uh, that way I have a chance to get them all lined up, get them all in the folder and get ready to review them that night. Uh, if you can't get it in before that, I don't know why you couldn't, but if you can't, or you just don't, don't remember until the last minute, that's fine too. We'll make it happen. So the photo review next Saturday night, and that's, uh, let's see, September 3rd. And we'll do our photo review again. We'll try to, depending on how many photos we get, we'll make sure we limit our time. So we get through them all without having to stay up all night long. Uh, however, this is your opportunity to show some of your work. It can be old work, new work, whatever it happens to be. And, uh, by all means, you know, participate. Nobody here is going to uh, hound you about your photo, no matter how good or bad. If it's something you're just testing, that's fine, too. And you'll get uh, some feedback from the audience and uh, from anybody that's up here in the on the panel. I see we got quite a few people in here. But, Jeffrey, before we start, you want to say something about your channel? Well, it's, uh, I'm sure most of you know it's selective imagery and uh, it focuses primarily on uh, birding, but uh, occasionally I do trains and macro and things like that. And hope, I'm hoping tomorrow in between raindrops, tomorrow is I think the only day I'm not going to have rain this coming week, uh, try to get some hummingbird shots. So I'll have to see if I can come close to matching Gustavo's work, which would be extremely difficult to do because he is great. <laughs> At taking hummingbird shots. Yes, and he is. Just want to add, Chuck. One thing you mentioned, uh, I think last last broadcast was for people to let you know if they're going to be around to comment on any photos that they put in, so you know whether to expect them or not. Yeah, you know, uh, I understand everybody can't be here for the actual review, and if you're not going to be, just put that in your email with your photo, and just let me know that way. We won't wait for, you know, too much time. We'll let too much time go by and uh, we'll just move on. We'll talk about your photo, of course. And you, you reminded me too, Jeffrey. So make sure your photos are at least uh, uh, 2048, 2048 pixels on the long side. That gives us room to look around the photo, zoom a little bit and things like that. Now to everybody in the chat and quite a few people already in here. Wow surprised you guys are great so let me go from the top right here roy roy bigsby charles davis paul connors hello all you guys yaman good to see you in here sir uh john ishi's in here john you have an email if you want to you want to check it out uh i am hassan's here atr bear mr ted's in here gustavo jeffrey was just talking about you sir and your hummingbird photos long rider good to see you buddy I uh, hope you'll join us in the photo review maybe this this uh, coming Saturday. Michael McDermott, Millerad. Uh, wow, quite a few wow. people in here. Jet Photo. Man, you guys are on it tonight. All wow. right. <laughs> wow. All right, great. Good, good group. It's always a good group in here. I yep. love it. Yeah, that's my uh, dragonfly, uh, my uh, make believe macro. That was with the eighty to four hundred. <laughs> hey, that's that's no taking portraits with the eight hundred pf. You know. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's true. Uh, a long rider. I, I I think you're just being uh, very humble there. I bet you've got some wonderful photos. Ted, good to see you. Uh, hey. Uh, RS, you still in here? You were talking about cameras earlier. Do you have the, do you have a lead on a couple of Z9s? If you would 
post that comment again, because there may be somebody in here now that wasn't in earlier or didn't scroll back to see that comment earlier. I'm sure there's somebody in here that would be interested in that. Uh, Paul says the next lens purchase he's going to make is the 24 to 120. Well, Paul, hey, Tim, Mr. Very Hunter. Happy. He'll be very happy with that lens. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Neville Island, but I'm too tired to hunt for a punchline. <laughs> <laughs> for all you folks in Europe, uh, Britain, or wherever you may be in Europe, thanks for being in here. I know it's late for you all. I was just telling somebody earlier, uh, the Wednesday show would probably be uh, better for you. I'm not trying to run you off. I love seeing people in here for both shows, but the whole reason for the Wednesday show is to kind of cater to uh, Europe. Uh, long rider asking if anybody owns the nikon 120 to 300 2.8 i don't uh long rider but you know i'll bet you somebody's going to be in here uh joe stroud good evening sir hi joe all right all right so again you know we talked about this the other day we're not going to go into all that all everything that happened but we talked about it the other day that's one of the great things about this channel uh at least from my point of view is everybody can get in here in the chat and chat with everybody make friends with people they wouldn't normally uh, have met or whatever and uh hoping that uh we can keep this going we can keep it going for a good while i don't plan on uh shutting it down so i hope you guys enjoy it we'll just continue to build this community hang on a second let me bring in mr ishi mr john ishi how are you sir Pretty good. Hey, hey. Right. Just, uh, sorry, I missed the show last Wednesday, but it was too late. Yeah, your the audio is perfect confused. tonight, man. Audio is perfect tonight. What you? What did your wife do for you? <laughs> she says, she says, Surfshark, Chrome, not Safari, and then you're good to go. <laughs> there you go. There you oh, go. And make sure you turn on the uh, the mic. <laughs> <laughs> all right great <laughs> yeah. well it sounds great yes yeah, oh, very good. good well it's chrome uh that's the that's the way to do it chuck and then vpn yeah well for me the vpn isn't an issue uh I, no, i've got a lot of i've got a lot of bandwidth here we got some i don't know yeah. mama had to have it for work office or whatever but anyway, uh, Chrome for the computer, definite must. I, I yeah. learned that pretty quick. Safari just wasn't cutting it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, you know what I bought yesterday? I got one of those uh, DJI, what, Ava, Avata, A-V-A-T-A. Have you seen that? It's a, a MPV mm -hmm. drone. Oh, okay. Is this the yeah, new you, one that just came yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You put on the goggles, you know? Right. And then, yeah. Kind of do this roller coaster thing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's something I don't need. I, I'd be buying new parts <laughs> all the time. It's yeah, kind yeah. of fun, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure, but, you know, I, I'd be one that would want to take it to its extremes before I even knew how to fly it, really. So cheap thrills, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I think because the other drones are boring. I mean, they fly out, you know, a couple of miles and you go up. 300 400 feet take some pictures you put a video together and nobody watches it <laughs> <laughs> See, i think roy needs something like that so he could get all the poisonous critters in australia and do it from a safe distance <laughs> yeah S space people just said it shouldn't it should have been called a, a v aviata since it aviates <laughs> uh, i had a drive I bought one, you know, year, quite a few years ago, or well, I don't know if it's quite a few, but anyway, now it's in a box and uh, never used again. <laughs> I crashed mine into a power line one time. <laughs> well, I, I figure I'm not very good with video games anymore, like when I was a kid, so I would probably wreck it in about an hour anyway. <laughs> But you can get some good shots, you know, from above and, you know, like rivers and deltas and get these cool patterns and whatnot. But 
<laughs> just another toy, something to do. Oh, uh, by you, Josh used it for some really nice uh, scenic shots out where he out where he went. You know, almost really all of your outdoor photographers yeah. uh, shooting wildlife and whatever that are uh, you know doing videos for YouTube use a drone for all the B roll. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just adds to, of course, it extends your time for your video where you may not have uh, enough time with the wildlife or whatever, the photos or whatever, but you can add all that B-roll in and it's entertaining. I mean, it, it's really fun to watch the B-roll too. Peter Lindgren does that in all of his videos. He, he uses a, a drone quite a bit for B-roll and does it extremely well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, space people saying drones, drones are illegal in most places. Um, let's throw it up here. Drones are Ill illegal in most places that you'd want to use them. That's so true, especially in built up yeah. areas. But one of the things what? about drones that you know, I mean, they're using it in different locations. And Peter Lundgren uses his in the city there where he lives, and he may be able to get away with it over there in Sweden. But yeah, here I, in Connecticut, I'm limited to my front yard or something crazy. Yeah, that, that's another yeah. thing, you know, uh, the the legality is you got to get FAA and all this bureaucratic paperwork and just say, forget it, you know. And then, of course, there's somebody who's going to come up and, you know, some Karen will come up to you and say, what are you doing? You know, you're taking a picture, man. So many people, though, uh, do. There are people that are just stupid about using it, you know, and I think that's what kills us. Yeah, you got people that go out and fly them into people's houses or chase their pets in their yard mm. or whatever stupid stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where where I am, unfortunately, the the beach is, you know, the the airport is very close to the beach, so oh, uh, yeah, yeah. you know you're you're not going to be able to fly anything, you know, no. like over the water or over the beaches or anything like that because you got the aircraft flying flying in over the water, crossing over the beach to go to the airport. Oh, you yep. get a lot of, a yeah. lot of, a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. So there's, there's no point, even if I oh, wanted it, not, I wouldn't have anywhere to use it. No, nah, I didn't. Then it's such said he only bought a drone to extend his still stuff. And, you know, there, there's a whole category of uh, aerial photos now in most of the, most of the photo sites, uh, just for aerial photos. And there are some fantastic photos coming from drones. Yeah, I mean, some some guys are just amazing. They got pictures that are unbelievable. Space people, explain that. <laughs> Bayou Josh is across town with his other family. <laughs> I'm missing something here. I, I, I think that's just a reference to him uh, jumping over to Sony. <laughs> I don't know. Possibly, I don't know. That's That's my guess. <laughs> So here we go again. I just want to point these out every now and then when I see it. I love when we get the sidebars going over in the chat. Jet Photo just made a comment saying, "May as well get the XT4, Michael. It's the best X Trans 4 camera." See, these are the things that go on over here in the in the chat. You know, where where are you going to be able to go on a Saturday night or a Wednesday afternoon and talk about this kind of stuff or get an answer to or hear somebody else's experience with something? So that's fantastic, man. I love having hey, you guys. Hey, 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 Jeffrey, Chuck, do you, do you guys ever use a SB5000? Oh, the, the, the speed, speed light. light. I, I, yeah, yeah, I think man, I've used it. <laughs> no, like I have, not for a while, but. I have a 910 and a, and a 900. No, I was just wondering how they works with the new uh, mirrorless cameras. Well, you're going to find out in a minute because somebody in the chat is going to answer that question. Oh, okay. Cool. Yaman says, well, somebody had said earlier that they're droned and drones are banned in uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I can, I can believe that. If you live in Washington, D.C., don't buy a drone, I guess, unless you're going to travel a good distance to go fly it. Yaman says drones are banned here after they've been used for terrorist attacks. Yeah, I get that. 
important port in the beginning of the year. They're still being sold, though, which is puzzling. It is kind of pu puzzling. Hmm. Uh, I guess you could donate them to the Ukrainians, huh? They seem to be doing pretty good with them things. Yep. <laughs> Paul says, as, as myself and uh, Ted can attest, I had the Tamron 35 to 150 with FTZ2 adapter on my Z9. That combo is very unbalanced. I believe the 24 to 120 is a much better combo with Z cameras. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm sure you'd be extremely happy with that 24 to 120. I don't know how much better it's going to be. I, I know it's going to be a bit better, but uh, balance, yes. And, uh, just native Z glass, you know, I know there's a lot of discussion on the internet, on YouTube and everything else about, you know, Z glass, whether it's better than uh, third party, but I mean, even uh, older F mount glass, I found it all, all the Z glass that I've used to be better. Yeah, me too. The F mount equivalent. Mm. Well, the, the, 20, the 24 to 120 in the Z uh, it's mount killer. is a lot better than the 24 to 120 that the F mount was. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> Not exactly even close. F. Hey, it Roy? is awesome. It is unbelievable. Yeah. I can't believe it for the price. To me, that that's like a great, oh. I, I use it for street photography. It's like perfect for street photography. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Drone ones it. are too much fish out for me. You know, most of the drones now, they have either, either variable aperture or, I'm sorry, variable focal distance. And, I mean, they're, they're getting pretty uh, pretty good now. Uh, I know DJI has several drones that either have a variable zoom or uh, a flick of a switch, and it goes, it may be digital, I don't know, but they work extremely well. Not like the old days when I put my GoPro on my first or my only drone, I was stuck with what I got. But even I guess even GoPro maybe maybe has something now that's uh, a little longer focal length. I don't know. RS, good to see you in here, man. You mind repeating your uh, comment about the Z9s? There may be people in here right now that would be interested in that. Uh can you use Skittles on drone footage? Well, I suppose you can. <laughs> it fixes everything, even regulations. True enough. Well, that, that, uh, that's where the rainbows come from. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It works extremely well on rainbows. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Roy Bigsby, here you go. There you go, Mr. Ishi. Use the SP5000. Didn't think it's good value. Hmm. I, I bought mine secondhand, so I got it half price. So okay, you know. half price is always a good deal. <laughs> That'll work, <laughs> even if I yep. don't use it. Uh, no, he's right. Uh, la, 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 la. If you really want to be, if you really want some drone footage, you get one of those uh, six blade copters or eight blade copters. And mount your Z9 on it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, you go first. You, you're talking about thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars for one of those. I, th yeah, I think I'd, I'd, ex I'd experiment with the Z30 first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be the sacrificial camera body. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Paul's saying grossly overpriced the SB five hundred, grossly overpriced for what they are. I guess if you get it at a deal, maybe it's okay. I uh, I have the 900 and the 910 that uh, I will use only because that's the only thing that has TTL right now on my uh, Z cameras. And uh, I have the Godox or whatever it is, the Flashpoint version. And the problem with Flashpoint is they've never moved beyond Windows. I don't have a Windows computer in the house. I could upgrade those or get a, a firmware update on those uh, speed lights uh, if I had a Windows computer. But I can't oh, do it with a Mac. Oh, yeah. I, didn't I don't, know I don't that. understand that. I don't know why it's so hard to uh, be able to download and update firmware with a Mac. But then again, I'm not a computer guru. 
Well, it's, it's foolish if you're a manufacturer and you're trying to support your customer base that you don't have it set up where people could download it on on either computer. That's that's talk about bad marketing. That's bad marketing. That that's bad business. It's not good for business. Hey, you Michael, know what I was going to ask you guys? Um, any of you guys do um, print your own work? I tried. Um, I, that's I another. That's printer. another art that I I'm no good at. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I tell you, you get one of these printers like an Epson five thousand. They work excellent. Okay. I've, so you, I've looked into printers like ten times. I've tried to talk myself into buying a printer. I don't know how many times. And because I don't really, I don't have a business, so I don't sell prints. I'd only be printing them for me. And I already got about seventy five prints in a drawer right now to uh -huh. sell at a craft fair in the fall in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. uh, it's like I wouldn't print enough. I you know, my ink, my my the the jets would all get clogged. It wouldn't get used often well, enough. So I, I, I have know. a I have a printer and uh, I tried it, but uh, the CYMK and getting everything set for print is completely different than seeing it on the screen. So Oh I, yeah well Chuck you see you you can't use a CMYK. That's that's for offset printing. Okay, well, I there you go. Uh, I know nothing about it. No oh, matter what okay. I did, you know, the photos just look terrible that I printed. Well, uh, I could teach you. It's, well, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I'm sure. I'm sure you could. I don't know if you want to spend the time. It would probably take me to learn. But yeah. Well, I could uh, come over to your house and we could figure this. I'll teach you how to come do on it. over. <laughs> <laughs> you better get there while he still has the house, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean printing can be a little bit of rocket science because uh, uh, basically everyone has to be speaking the same language. In other words, your your yeah. camera has got to be speaking uh, this language. Your computer has got to be. You got to have the right paper profile and the color profiles, uh, so they. So everyone is uh, speaking the same language. You get if one speaking a different language, like your computer and your paper profile, then it's not going to come out properly. So oh. um, th that that in lies. But having said that, like Diana got some of her work printed uh, the other day from a master printer, and I'm telling you, it is the only way to appreciate your images. They come out unbelievable. And you that's know, when I, you really see the power of your, your camera and lens. You know, I had uh, good luck with Nation's Photo uh, printing for me. And they will do the color correction because, of course, that's part of the printing process. That, uh, but anyway, uh, they've, they've done a great job for me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to shoot something this coming Thursday for somebody. And uh, they're going to take the photos and then have them printed. I'm just giving them the... You know, I'll I'll do an edit to their taste, and then they're going to take them and have them printed. Would be nice well, if that, I could print them. Yeah, I mean it's it's fun to do because you know you you want to try to do you know from capture to print you know because you're the one that took the picture, you're the one that was there, and then you know what the outcome is. Yeah, as opposed to a printer, they were never there. They weren't with you, so they weren't there what you took. So the satisfaction to do it from A to Z uh, is very, very satisfactory. And oh, yeah. Even with a four megapixel camera in the old days, I used to print uh, 19, you know, 13 by 19 prints from a four megapixel camera. Yeah. And it's tight. But, you know, you got to you just got to have the right, um, you know, software to be able to do it. But the. It, it's incredible. Hey guys, here's uh, the comment by RS. His local camera shop, shop had two Z9s on the shelf today, at Fort Worth camera. And, and if so, I guess this takes me back to my rants about uh, people that ordered from B and H and then waited and waited and you know they got in the queue and they're number one thousand and fifty two, and B and H is getting you know forty cameras a shipment. Yeah, you're going to wait a while. But anyway, this is calling around to shops and things like that. But uh, I thank RS for dropping this in the chat tonight. 
And, uh, you know, if anybody wants to grab a Z9 or a second, I guess, because if nobody, you know, if anybody was looking for one, here's your opportunity. Maybe they may still be available and just they're, they're uh, available. Chuck, they're available everywhere now. I, I know. I know. But we still have so, people that, you know, complain they because they're still waiting for B&H, you really? know, to get get to their name on the roster. I mean, yesterday there was two on the shelf at the camera shop. So they've yeah. already fulfilled the the orders for people, and now they're just sitting there like any other, like a car. Well, we said it a while back that by the end of the year, uh, at the latest, that the Z9 uh, shipments would be caught up. I think Europe is ha still having a, tr a time trying to get uh, really? Z9s for whatever reason. So anybody over in uh, Britain, you, you can let us know if that's still an issue, is if everybody's still waiting for their Z9. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, poor uh, Becky and Khan, they, they seem like they were, uh, Grays was, was at the short end of the stick all the time. They were, they, if they got any, it'd be one or two per shipment. It was bad. <laughs> I don't know if it got better or not for them, but it was really bad in the beginning. Yaman, I don't know anything about Davies versus Corbett. So I, I have no idea what that is. Then again, I haven't been on YouTube as much other than, you know, where you've seen me uh, because uh, I've been doing, I've uh, been doing other I think things. It, it was a, I mean, I just saw a little bit. It was a story about a picture that was taken or I don't know. It was something about to do with women photographers and somebody did something and somebody didn't like any something. And then I wasn't interested, so I didn't watch it. Okay. <laughs> so Zaman says it's very controversial, though. Yeah, it is. It is, it is and, and, it, and it's a subject matter I don't want to get into because because you're going down a rabbit hole that you can't get out of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, or, or it's nothing I can affect or also. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, exactly, you know. I mean, the Northrops go crazy over it, and I, I said, "No, I'm not. I'm not into this." You know, to complain to complain about constantly stuff you have no no control over, and you cannot make any change uh, relative to the subject matter is just a waste of your mental capabilities. It's just a waste of time. <laughs> and, and their opinions, you know, especially uh, what really upset me one time is when those Northrops Tony made a big to do about uh steve, uh, steve McCurry. McCurry. yeah and you know and i know steve i've met him many times and you know come on you don't even know the guy and in 1985 when this happened you know tony you were just a little you know you're just a little 12 year old boy and oh, uh, you know things were different and and i i know steve and he has no he he has no malice and or intent. Uh, you know, I, I didn't follow that story. I didn't watch it or anything else because then again, I, I don't follow them, but uh, I heard a lot about it and I know was, there was a lot of controversy over it. It was years ago, right, Jeff? It must have been four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, long time ago. And I don't know, it just well, it just it just fits into the whole premise of what well, we talked about some people's channels is, you know, you, if you, you have controversy, you get, you get people to watch, right? You get your viewership. Yeah, exactly. And they weren't there. And I, I, I've been to that place in Peshawar, uh, Pakistan, where the, where, where the refugees were. I was there in 19, I was there when the, when, the, when the uh, Soviets were there in 19, what was it? 80. I was there in 88. Yeah. There were 6 million refugees there. Of course, I was in my in my mid thirties now. Tony, you know, he was just a 15, 16 year old schoolboy. He wasn't even shaving yet. Exactly, <laughs> you know. And I was there taking pictures back then. So you know, I, I've never I've never been to Peshawar, but I've seen it from across the other side of the border. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's yeah, it's, well, that's where all the Afghan refugees were during the, when yeah. the Soviets invaded, right? Yeah. So I was there, and uh, you know. I saw all those Taliban guys. 
I mean, there's six million Afghan refugees, and that's a lot. Yeah, there's a I, lot I mean, of folks, you know. Yep, we got Mr. Ronald Pollard here. Let's bring him in, oh, Mr. Good. Ronald. How are you, sir? Oh. I just well, I'm there well, Chuck. I'm oh well. I'm just, I'm just, just tired, it, fella. I was gonna say, he doesn't look I, awake. <laughs> he's been shooting all day. Yeah, yeah. I think today. Yeah. That's why your shoulder is slanted to the right, huh? <laughs> Carrying that tag, Ron. He's kicked back in the hotel hey, hoping he'll get some rest. Bed. He's they're laying gonna work, in They're going to work him hard tomorrow. Oh Let me grab gosh. this next comment. I just want to answer Anthony. You're, no, Anthony, I don't. I probably should, shouldn't I? But I don't run parallels on my Macs. There's something else I need to look into. Man, I'm going to have to hire a tech team to come in here and bring me up to speed is what I'm going to have to do. Oh, get my wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. somebody's got to come <laughs> in and do it. I'm a Ludo. So, so, fellas, I'm sorry, man. I'm Chuck, I um, admiration for you. I just wanted to say hi. I want to let y'all know that um, the grind is real, fellas. It's real. It's it's not a cup grind it's real so i just yeah. finished about eight hours eight and a half hours of shoot uh here in atlanta for the um uh, tour championship and what are yeah. you shooting oh golf golf the golf, PGA yeah. oh, golf. Man. it's like I motocross know. man there's a lot of walking involved in that isn't there <laughs> you got you had the sun beating on you you're walking and walking and walking yeah. Add the beautiful humidity that, that only comes from the deep south, you know, the beautiful humidity. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I will, but I, but I have to say this. Oh, the Z9. <laughs> <laughs> Killer. It is such a remarkable machine. Guys that's been shooting this thing use it. And um he said, Man, Pollard, this thing is unbelievable. I said it's a game changer. It's a it is it's a vision changer. It's the things we can do. Was I in line with what you were talking about, Chuck? I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. You're good. All right. I just wanted to say Jeffrey John Chuck into the chat. I don't know what else to say. I I I just John, I don't know what else to say. I I, I Chuck, I get it why you say Ron, this has got to be in a, a smaller form factor. That's exactly why. See, that would be Chuck's response. <laughs> it, it is imperative that they get this announced wherever it Chuck. it's imperative chuck that they get this announced because what i experienced i mean i don't i mean i gotta i gotta watch the embargo on some other five years guys the embargo right stuff. and um so i got but as far as the ball hitting the t no role there is it's very minimal that was at 20 frames a second, Chuck. That wasn't at yeah. 120. That was at 20. John, selling candy from a baby. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you feel like I, you're cheating, kind of. I don't, don't you? you feel like you're cheating. It's like cheating. I feel like it's a cheat code. Yes. I feel like it's, yeah. it's a cheat. Curious. It's unbelievable, man. And, um, See um, Rom, Rom, John Rom. I got to see Adam Scott Graph. You, you name them. All the the top thirty guys were there. Um, went signed over to the live thing. The other the other golf yeah. competitor with. Them. But they they were um, they were all there. And uh, um, to say we got some an understatement. And um, mm -hmm. Even with the two five six, 
I couldn't, I couldn't make myself miss guys. That's great. The only time I missed was I got so tired because after that six miles, that's six miles. Man, you start seeing your ancestors, you know? Yeah, I know. I know <laughs> how you feel. I know well, how you that, feel, man. That humidity, humidity just sucks so the life out of you, man. The humidity just sucks the life right out of you. <laughs> yep. you yes, Jeff. And you got to wear and still have some cushions in your shoes because you're walking so many hills. Goodness. Yep. And you're walking so many hills with, and you're avoiding 50,000 people unbelievable yep. unbelievable guys so know that i'm here chuck respect um you know you know with you you I'm, I'm part of your community you're part of mine um john I, all of the guys you know i feel that way about everybody so i'm with you i just went from another mother is listening i'm watching i'm praying and I hope the best for everyone. I just wanted you to know that, that um, I'm not going to stay on. I just had to. I just had to say that. All right. Thanks. I, 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 Your I pictures are you. awesome. Your pictures are classic and they're beautiful, Ron. Thank you. I love God. them. Thank you, man. Thank you, John. And coming from you, if I were a bird, I'd have another type of hero. But I love, love people. And who photograph people for a living, but I'm sorry, I learned to change that phrasing. Who photograph people for a living, Jeff? Um, John, John, nothing but respect for you guys, Chuck. Nothing but respect for you, you know. All right, buddy, well, you need to I need to you in here, crash huh? and have a real good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never valued Epsom salt the way I do now, you know. Ep <laughs> yeah. Epsom salt? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Epsom salt. I understand <laughs> why the Epsom old why, salt. Why the, I understand why take a bath in Epsom salt and yep. let that stress and that tiredness leave your body into a 12 round fight, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, brother, get out there and so, tackle it again tomorrow. I know you're back at it tomorrow. <laughs> take a couple of ibuprofen soak in the tub and get some sleep i think ron's going to be looking for someone that looks just like him to go out tomorrow instead of him yeah, it, it's bad enough when you do one day of it you know i used to shoot the nationals and that was one day long but i went down to loretta lens uh for the week-long uh, amateur nationals so i was doing it every day i got to tell you by the end of the week i was beat yeah yeah there's nothing like water guys soda yeah. red bull none, none of that <laughs> water water oh nope. man water. Oh, yep. man. <laughs> so All right, better, but it doesn't be blessed you. guys you too, buddy. I hope you have a yes. wonderful day tomorrow, too. And when the embargo yeah. lifts, I hope to see some of the photos. Yeah, you will. You'll see several. Okay. You'll see several. I think I'll find I do. I do follow I'll golf. I watch all the majors, but uh, none of the regular yeah. tournaments. Uh, but I love the majors. So mm -hmm. I know all the people that I'm sure you're seeing and shooting out there. It must be a blast. Yeah, these are the, this is the top 30 from the, this is the year-end tour championship. Okay. <clears throat> and so, yeah, there's quite a few who are here, man. And as they're hitting that ball, sound like little guns going off all over yeah. the place, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, guys, y'all be blessed. Have a good evening. I'll just be listening, Chuck. All right, Ron. All right. Bye -bye. Well, at least yeah. now you can say that noise you hear is not the shutter on my D850. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or my yeah <laughs> all right guys guys have a good one guys have a good one <laughs> all right you too brother you too take hey, care hey, bye Chuck, bye. Can, can i respond to this michael mug yeah how do you i can't i i, I don't know i'm probably saying it wrong michael 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 mcdermott yeah he, he's asking about this gfx 
Yeah. I, well, let me, everybody, so everybody knows, I know Michael just asked his question up on the screen, but Hagen's actually out earning money today, unlike me, who's just sitting here in front of a computer. <laughs> so he's actually shooting. Uh, I believe he's got a wedding he's shooting tonight. I saw something earlier. He sent me something earlier, so I, I assume he was at a wedding. So that that's fog, and it, it, he may get in here. Who knows? I don't know what time his wedding. He finishes his wedding, but I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Go ahead, Mister Ishi. Well, he was uh, talking about this GFX, um, and he wanted to buy one, I guess. And uh, I just want to mention that I I have a GFX S one hundred S, and uh, it. It is uh, the lenses and stuff is really, really well worth it. It's amazing. Uh, it's it's sixteen bit and having a hundred megapixel camera is is pretty mind blowing. So I just want yeah. To give um, him my, uh, Seth Miranda gives it kudos. He has one. Yeah, it's he, so. He 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 loves it. I mean, it's, but it's, it's you know it's it's different. It's it's not meant for sports and that type of thing. I was going to say, he uh, uses it for uh, other things, uh, yeah. but uh, he loves it. Landscape, studio, portraiture. Yeah. Yep. You know. Hey, Michael, I don't know about big time ballers, but because uh, <laughs> I, I, I sell uh, things to get the next uh, camera that I want. But then again, I don't know how old you are, Michael, and uh, no offense by saying that, but when you get our age, you've, you know, the kids are gone. I don't know if that really means anything because they're really never gone. <laughs> they're never but gone. They're the never kids gone. are gone, you know, <laughs> and, and you've worked hard all your life. You had a career, blah, blah, blah. And now's the time that we can afford this stuff. When I was yeah. in my thirties, I couldn't afford this. There was no, no chance any of this was going to happen. See, I, I read that comment differently. Big time baller. Yeah, I cried a lot after I had to pay what I paid for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I bawled my eyes out for days. <laughs> hey, Chuck, I, I got to go. I got to uh, take the wife out for lunch. Yes, you do, because she says so. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, um, plus, you owe her because she got your audio working good. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Okay, love you guys, huh? I uh, love you too, John. Hey, tell your lovely wife we said hello and thanks for okay. sharing you for a while. All right, we'll do. Take care, Jeff. Have a good one. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. All right. And then there were two. <laughs> and there were two. Uh, let's see. So here you go. Paul was down at uh, B and H with uh, Ted. What he's saying is B and H said they wouldn't have any, uh, or wouldn't see any unallocated Z nines until 2023. I, you know that may be for B and H again. I go back to man, that's the last place I'll order a camera from now on. It's not because I don't like B and H. I just don't like the two or three thousand people that order there, and that queue is so long. You don't know where you are in it, so. You know, B&H may be selling or uh, uh, going down that list when other people have two or three on the shelf. All right. It pays, it pays to make the phone calls. You know, you got to just make phone calls if you've been waiting for one. I just want to correct you real quick, Michael. It's not 6000 plus tax. It's 5500 plus tax. <laughs> there is a difference there. Yeah. Not much, but there is a difference. <laughs> Jet Photo says he's thinking about buying uh, a Fuji medium format. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody that has it likes it. It just depends on what you're shooting. And, you know, if you're doing a lot of studio or just, uh, I guess, uh, landscapes and things like that, that, it's the perfect camera. That's why everybody's asking for a high megapixel camera now from all three manufacturers. Canon, Sony, and Nikon. I know not everybody is, but there are quite a few people that are asking for it. Uh, wonder how many Z9s they sold, I guess, at B&H. That's a good question, Long Rider. I'll bet you it's been a bunch of them because they, they get a bigger allocation, I'm sure, than uh, most 
uh, stores, even bigger stores. Mm. Yeah, here we go. Ted saying, yeah, still slow de delivery in England, Chuck. Mm. So do you know, I mean, do you know people that are waiting for it? You're, do you, you personally know of people that are waiting for it? I'm just wondering why uh, England got such a, well, it's not just England. It's uh, surrounding e England. Yeah. Uh, the European uh, there got. Yeah. Got kind, kind of screwed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, they were trying. Well, they said what the biggest, the biggest market actually for the Nikon stuff now is China, and then us. Yeah, and so they're they're kind of like, uh, you know, in third place, uh, I guess. So maybe they just kept allocating for the top two areas, and they they kind of, I think they kind of stiffed them. I, I kind of think they gave them a raw, I do a, too. raw deal, a raw deal. Really I do did. too. So. RS is saying the, these were allocated, but the guy decided not to get them. Well, that means that they're, they've got them on. The, I know that if they were allocated, it's not a literal on the shelf camera, but if, if they don't have any, they didn't have anybody else waiting for cameras, then that means that they should have on the shelf. Now they may go fast, but you know, a lot of these uh, smaller stores are that way. Now they've filled all their NPS orders and everything else. It's it's interesting. Look at look at Jeff and Leslie's comment. They went out and shot over a thousand, a close to a thousand images today. Wow! Yeah, it's when you shoot that many, and that's when you have a good day. That's how many you shoot when you're having a. That's a sign you had a really good day. Yeah. And then you're going to be scratching your head saying, "Oh man, I got to spend two days on my computer going through them all." <laughs> But it's worth it. That means you got some good stuff if you shot a thousand shots. Yep. So Michael wants to know how much does it cost to make a Z9 body? I don't have any idea, Michael. No idea at all. Nor do I know how much it costs to make any of the bodies. Nikon, Canon, or Fuji, or Sony. Hmm. Oh, you, you remember the old business acumen was always, you know, materials that you would charge materials times two. So who knows if that applies, you know, maybe they, maybe they made well, half, half the, one, the money on it, you know? Well, the one thing you can't calculate and uh, maybe they, they do uh, somehow is the R and D that went into the development of any mm -hmm. camera. You're paying for that too, or yeah. a portion all right. Roy talking about the GFX 50 images better than the 100 because they don't have a leaf shutter. I decided to stay with my Hasselblad H for now. Okay. And, and, and we can go down that path or I don't want to go down that path, but we could always talk about it's not true medium format or at least the established medium format size, but close. Uh, Oh, this is talking about uh, printing. Yeah. At, at Costco, do some. They look awesome. Yeah. Uh, what's the profit margin? Um, $500. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. So what are you getting at here, Michael? I'm trying to follow you, man. Is it, you mean, is it worth it? You're not one of those people that thinks companies sh should take a loss to make things cheaper. Are you? I don't want to go down that road. Oh, uh, uh, they, you know, they don't always know what's going to be hot. So when they get something that's hot, boy, they got to take advantage of it and make sure they carefully put some of that money aside for R and D so they can try to hit a home run again the next time out. Ah, oh, I'm trying to sc scoot on down here, guys. Uh, yeah. da, 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 da. Bird Costco is pretty good with prints. I, I knew a friend that used to do, uh, well, we used to shoot together sometimes, and they but way back, well, it's not like it's 100 years ago. I'm not 100 years old. But when they used to have the American Le Mans race series that had all the different brands of cars, and it was road racing. It wasn't NASCAR where you're just going around an oval. It was, you know, like the... Uh, t you know, 24 hours of Le Mans and uh, 12 hours of Sebring. And then they actually came to Connecticut and they raced at Lime Rock, uh, Lime Rock uh, 
park. And I used to go there with him and we used to get pictures of these, uh, of the crews and working on the cars and the pits off the pit row and everything. And it was great. And, uh, he used to get his prints done at Costco all the time. They always came out really, they always came out pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Mm. Glass big and expensive. Yeah. Thomas did just jump over to the, Z72. He seems to be happy right now. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, just looking through the comments, trying to find the next comment. Yeah, I, uh, Vahagen is uh, shooting, I believe, tonight, so we, we might not see him at all. You never know with Vaughn. He might decide he's taking a break, if he gets a break, to uh, jump on the phone and jump in and say hello. Because that's what kind of man Vaughn is. <laughs> well, he's he, he's been cranking out stuff and and splitting up video segments and doing all sorts of stuff. I mean, he's a man on a mission right now. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, 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 um. There you go, Michael. I'll throw your comment up there. I hope you can get one, brother, if that's what you want, because that's what it's about, want. And if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. Anything else? What are you seeing? Yeah. Jeffrey. In something that that uh, your wife tells you to talk about and that's hit the like button, baby. Hit the like button. Yeah, absolutely, guys. If you if you don't mind, hit hit the like button. Hey baby, I'm telling them to like and subscribe right now. <laughs> I'm telling them to like and subscribe right now. She said thank you. <laughs> All I'll right. have to I'll have to jump over quickly in uh to YouTube and, and do a like quick <laughs> and then come back. Uh, let's see where are we at. Let me get on down here, folks. So I pass you again. If I pass your comments up, sorry about that. I'm always dwelling on one or two. But again, I, I like seeing the sidebars going in the chat, people answering each other's questions and helping others out. That's fantastic. And there's so much experience over there, a whole lot more there than there is on the screen right now. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, uh, Jeffrey? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you have Mr. Bixby in there. Then he, he out, he outclasses us about, about a hundred to one, I think at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are quite a few Albert's in here now. Caesar's in here now. Yeah. Uh, Albert, man, when I'm telling you, I, I get, he's got to get his, uh, studio up and running or, or just the ability to stream. I want you guys to see what he does, the glass he plays with. And if you want to know about adapters, that is the man to ask. <laughs> How many adapters do you have now? Uh, Albert, I'm just curious. I know you've got a bunch, but I'm just wondering how many I'm still up here with the, I'm so far behind. Uh, I'm up here with the, uh, Ronald comments. Uh, uh, so bad for Ronald, man. He looked so wiped. He looked so wiped out. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. Oh, he's, he's got his son with him. His son's doing something else. I think his son's working some video stuff, but anyway, yeah, he had told me the other day he was going to be in Atlanta shooting golf and I forgot about it. I sent him the link and, uh, he sent, he sent a response back saying, brother, I, I'm not going to make it. Um, I'm shooting in Atlanta. And I think this was after they had finished, just after they had finished. So uh, I think that he was wiped out at that point. I'm surprised. I'm surprised he even jumped on. Uh, that's okay. He, that's because he loves you, Chuck. That's because he loves yeah. you, man. He's a good yeah. guy. Good guy. All right. K 
community. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about it, Tim. I do. But uh, I know a lot of people don't care to talk about it. I get something else, I'll talk about it. However, I will mention that uh, Matt Irwin dropped a video. I'm sure most of you have seen it. And his, uh, his thoughts are it's going to be a Z6 III rather mm -hmm. than the Z8. But then again, I don't know. I'll just throw this in here real quick. On per, uh, a percentage uh, um, shoot pie chart, I think it's 45% that we're going to see the Z8. This is me thinking out loud. Uh, 35%, it could be the Z6 III and, uh, 25% that it could be the Z7 III. And I'm going to leave that last 5% open for the APSC body. But that one's got me baffled because I don't know what the naming convention would be for that. Since we already have a Z50, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be Z60, 70, 80, or whatever. So anyway, that, that's my thoughts right now. And I go to that rather than just on the Z8, only because I think that Nikon may want to get a lower price uh, camera out before they go to the Z8. So, you know, your, your $2,500, $2,500 uh, hybrid, good hybrid camera that does everything, you know, pretty well, uh, concentrates on uh, more on the video side. At least that's my thought. So the cheaper camera might be their bet coming first and then the Z8, Z7. So we'll see. Uh, here you go, space people. You don't have a, Z, a Z9 yet, but you want a Z9. Well, if you've got the money, RS has got a, a location for you to go and spend it. Yeah. Seems like there, is, there are maybe a couple that are available. Uh, uh. Uh, Malorad, I hope I pronounced that right. He says, "Why camera manufacturers don't give worldwide worldwide warranty?" And what there was, a, remember we had a discussion about gray market cameras versus yep. uh, USA warranty cameras. Yep. And what was the? I mean, somebody explained that well. Why why that is? I mean, it is it has to do with um, um the the marketing uh, plan in different regions of the world, I think, and, and what they can sell the cameras for in certain areas. And, and that might, I think that had something to do with why you don't, you know, why a gray market camera, you can't, you know, if you, if you buy it here in the U S you're not going to get the warrant, you know, it's not going to be covered under the warranty. Yeah. But, um, somebody might be able to chime in on that, that, uh, you know, someone in the crew here had a good, good reason uh, for why that happens. Hey, I got a question for you, uh, uh, Jeffrey. How far are you from Raleigh, North Carolina? Ooh, I would guess. I would, I'm just guessing here, probably four hours. Oh, okay. I'm going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina in a couple of weeks. My wife has to go down there for, back to headquarters for uh, a merger. I can't remember all that's going on, but she's going to be there about 30 days. I'm only going to be there for about four or five days. And then I'm heading to Tennessee going to my fifth group reunion. Can't <laughs> wait. See, see my buddies I haven't seen for a while, but I'll be down there about four days or so. And she's going to be working. And uh, if there's anybody in North Carolina that lives near Raleigh, let me know. See if we can't uh, get together while I'm down there. All right. Uh, all right. Let me just skip to the bottom, guys. I'm sorry if I'm missing all your your uh, comments and questions. Uh, feel, free, feel free to bash me in the chat because I've passed up your comment. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Greg Wilson says, I don't understand Nikon body naming system. I, I think it's best just to give up on it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. It is, it is difficult. Uh, we're so used to the way it was, and this one's kind of hard to figure out. Um, here's Jeff and Leslie. I think we'll see a Z8 followed by a Z80. Oh, that's interesting, which would be the APSC, but I'm doubtful it will show up before 2023, maybe early 2024. Okay. All right. 
So what is coming in October, guys? I, I'm really believing, and this is for the Nikon side of the house here, but, you know, we are, you got you to gotta excuse this, gentlemen. You, you guys and with Canon and Sony, they've been doing so well and, and dropping these, um, you know, camera bodies. They're rolling out the technology that they have now in cameras already. And, uh, you know, Nikon hasn't done that yet. You know, the Z6 II and the Z7 II are nothing compared to what I believe the Z6 III and Z7 III will be. So we're excited about that. And it's good for the company, too. So that's what we're waiting for. But I believe October we're going to see something. I don't know what for sure. I gave you my percentile on what I think it might be. And I could be completely wrong, but I'm really waiting uh, for October. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. Well, uh, 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 when there was that conversation today on Matt Irwin's show with the Z63, at first I kind of dismissed it, but then when you think about it, that certainly would be a much easier thing for them to do because they they more than likely would use the same exact body and just change stuff on the inside, and yeah. maybe get it out to market quicker so well, there is a possibility that they could snooker us all and 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 sneak out you know a third generation z6 or z7 because it, it should be easier for them to do yep i i agree uh, but a lot of people are saying we got too many 45 megapixel cameras we don't need another one of those Using that stack sensor out of the Z9 and putting it in a Z8, you've got all the components you need on the shelf, uh, especially if you're catching up in the Z9 demand. So anyway, I don't know what it'll be, guys. Uh, I, I had expected Z8 uh, for so long, but you know, thinking about it, I, I'm really considering the possibility of that Z63. You know, going to a, a lower price camera so that more people can. Uh, move into the z bodies a lot of people have held out haven't jumped on the z series yet so if you know, they, october's if, close if they were smart and i'll knock on wood if they were smart they'd shock us all and release the 200 to 600 whatever whatever body comes out that would that would blow people away <laughs> yep yep Hey, Greg, I don't, I'm not going to say I'm never coming to California. I don't know when I'll get to California. I've been to California a few times, but uh, we'll see, buddy. If I'm never out there, I'm going to link up with you, Vahagan, everybody. I want to see everybody, man. And Yaman, um, so I, I, I have to kind of help you out here. Any whiskey made in Tennessee is whiskey. I know we're talking the same thing here. However, mm -hmm. Kentucky has the, the the patent, if you will, on bourbon. Same thing, just different mm -hmm. names. But if it's if it's not from Kentucky, it can't be labeled bourbon. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I'm from Kentucky, and I didn't know that till you know, I don't know about ten or twelve years ago. But it 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 is good. You're you're not lying there. Uh, <laughs> Greg, Greg Wilson saying that maybe Nikon will send him his 800 for his wedding anniversary in October. Uh, when in October, Greg? Because my my 40th is going to be October 2nd, 40 years. So maybe I can talk my wife into letting me get the 400 2 <laughs> yeah, I doubt. I doubt it. <laughs> Hey, John, I'm in San Diego. Is that close? <laughs> yeah, was, what? What is that probably? About 2,800 miles or so? Uh, he's probably, he's in the most, I think, the uh, San Diego. Isn't that like the the best overall climate of pretty much anywhere in the United States, I believe? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Jet, I, I'm still on this about uh, the size. Uh I don't think Nikon's so much smaller, if any, than Canon and Sony. We're not talking corporations. Canon makes a lot of other products. I'm not talking about the corporation. I'm talking about the imaging division. Uh, and uh, 
the same thing for Sony. Sony imaging is completely different from Sony Semiconductor and Sony TV or whatever it is and yada, yada, yada. So I don't know if I can give them that excuse that they're so much smaller. And and not just that, but you've got uh, Canon. Their imaging division isn't just uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. It's also the Cine line. So they may have a bigger burden than any of the other or either of the other two. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Oh, I know we they, like to give them a pass. <laughs> huh? Right. I says, and they got their copy machines too. If they want to. Yeah, copy. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And October is Nikon's favorite release month. Yep. Michael keeps saying this, get ready for, get ready for, uh, October Z8. Well, <laughs> I hope you're right. And I'm still holding out for that myself. Um, Michael, he, he he's busting our chops here, but I'll put his comment up there. <laughs> uh, is anything a real thing, Michael? Yeah. I, you know, uh, Oh, Roy says he's still open for a Z1. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're a few years from that, I guess. That was an interesting uh, point, though. What is the Z1 going to be? If it followed the other name, naming conventions with uh, other brands. Well, because they're confused, it'll be stamped Z10, and then they'll have to draw a line through the zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say, oops, we made a mistake. We meant Z1. <laughs> Greg, I hope you get your 800 soon, man. I hope you do. At least we know they're still making them <laughs> since Nikon Rumors says that we've got another shipment here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Well, Michael, I hope that changes for you, brother. I hope that changes for you. You can get what you want. Nothing wrong with Fuji, though. No, Fuji, quite a few Fuji. people shooting Fuji. And you know, it all depends on what you like to shoot because if you're doing, if you're doing, um, you know, environmental, you know, if you're doing street photography and stuff like that, I mean, obviously, I mean, those are perfect cameras for that. They're small, they're light, they got good glass. They're a good thing. They're good. Roy says, I would love the 200 to 600 Z lens, but not as excited if it's a variable aperture. And then John follows it with, no more long lenses. <laughs> oh, hang on, Mark Watson's calling. Hang on a second, guys. Well, we got to hope they sneak out the the uh, the 85 one two pretty soon. I think it, a lot of people want that. Yes, sir. I just thought you'd like to know. There's a new posting on Nikon Rumors about the Ch Nikon China posting a 67 me megapixel sensor. Hey, hang on a second. Hang yeah. on a second. Let me put you on here live. Here, here you go. Well, I guess everybody heard you. I thought I had it muted, but everybody, this is Mark yeah. calling in. Go ahead, Mark. Say it again. Uh, Nikon China is posting an image that are being made in the 67 megapixel sensor sensor that's what the math worked out on the resolution you might want to check the site and read it okay so that's all it's just talking about the sensor it sensor and being a possible z8 sensor oh well, that's interesting uh, 67 yeah. megapixel or that's the estimation based on the math mm -hmm. okay well it's interesting there you I go i thought you might like to give you it looks like it's a flat night tonight. So I thought, well, I'll give you something to talk about. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't want to get so tied up in it because we've got so many other brand shooters in here, but it's good to know, as I said, you know, we Nikon shooters are, are happy. I think all Nikon shooters would be happy, but those that didn't want to buy the, the Z nine, this is what they're waiting for. They're holding out mm -hmm. on purchases, waiting to see what's coming in October hopefully in October. And I do believe we're going to get something, but that's interesting. Yes, it is. And I, uh, I'm going to be busy packing up and moving so we can 
do some things on my house. I'm, we're getting close to that, and it's it's been a nightmare. Brother, you don't have to tell me anything about packing and getting things ready and trying to move. It has been a nightmare for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till you have a fire, my gosh. I think, and trying to get things to match up together, it is impossible. Yeah. I just got wallpaper in from England this week to match with the rest of the tile in my bathroom. <laughs> wow. You had to go to England to find the match, huh? I had to find the tile. It would be, it's got a little, little life. It's not this tame stuff, you know, junk and everything. Yeah. And they print it custom to the size and they set it up and it was here on Thursday. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. Now, of course, my bathroom has about four or five shades of green in it. <laughs> I, take, I take it you like green. Yeah, my my uh, my bucket list thing would be to have Hillary Farr and David Visiting from Love It or Listen run away from my house saying there's too much color. I can't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So anyway, I just thought I'd pass that log to you. So. Give you something, you know, add soft to. All right. Well, well, we'll see if it takes off in here. But I appreciate you letting me know. I hadn't seen it, so I'll definitely check it out, though. I mean, I got to check it oh. out now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm curious. Hello. I we'll know what's going on. <laughs> so enjoy and have a good night. All right. Appreciate it, Mark. You have Bye-bye. a good night, too. Bye bye. All right. I like Mark. I like Mark. Loved his photo he submitted last time, but it probably only resonated with us older people because we like looking at old photos <laughs> and looking at all the stuff. It's just nostalgic for us, maybe, but it was still a good photo to boot. Uh, yeah, Gustavo, I saw that. Um, he seems to favor a higher megapixel camera in the near future. Uh, so, you know what, guys? It could be that the Z8 will be that uh, higher megapixel camera. So I have no idea what they'll do with the Z7 III. I mean, I'm not giving up hope yet. It's, this is just yet another possibility. But it's interesting that that's just come up. I need to read that and find out in, you know, in context of what the article is talking about. You know, if it's one of those things that, uh, uh, you know, they just developed or whatever, then, but then again, it could still be, uh, it could still be the a Z8. They're just saying they've developed it. They could have developed it a year and a half ago. Oh, man. More information, more information. Well, I wonder if Nikon Rumors will at least get on board and start talking about a few things. You know, I, this is for all this is for all brands uh right now does it seem to everybody that leaks have been uh shut down with all brands because nikon rumors is starving for something on this so they can talk about it since they haven't you know they won't project or predict or whatever uh i'm wondering if canon rumors is in the same boat and sony rumors is in the same boat as well. They're just not getting any information. They're not being fed any leaks. I don't know. But it seems to be very quiet. It seems like all the manufacturers have clamped down on their NDAs. Said, talk about it, you're done. Well, and the fact that it is a document that you sign and uh, you can be punished, you know, by law for violating those NDAs. Not that they'll do it. Well, I guess they could. All right. Anyway, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think it's been pretty strange, pretty pretty quiet. It's okay with me, though. It lets us talk about it and dream. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, I think as we talked before, and, and I think a lot of people on the chat kind of agreed, was the we're, we're thinking that the, uh, the new... Low end 
uh, megapixel size is going to be, you know, in that 33, 36 megapixel range at some point that the 24s are going to kind of phase out. You know, maybe the entry level camera will be 24, but then anything, uh, you know, then the, then the next one up would be in the 30s, you know. Well, I think technology is moving, moving the bar, you know, so yeah. the uh, 24 megapixel bodies are just that. And I mean, even that's just going to go away, I think. I think it has to do with the technology, too. So we'll yeah. see what kind of, uh, you know, Kung Fu, the, this new camera, when it comes out, has in it. And I think we're going to be surprised. There may be a few things that you don't even get in the z9 i know it sounds crazy well why would people buy a z9 well and i've said this for a long time people buy a, a full body camera the the flagship camera for different reasons i know somebody said something uh i saw a comment and i think it was in it may have been in an email somebody sent me i can't remember talking about they wanted no this was on uh this was a comment on uh matt Irwin's, uh video Somebody wants a DF, uh, mirrorless DF, but they want it with a bigger battery. Well, as far as I know, you got two choices. Nikon has, well, two choices for the larger cameras, and that's EN-EL15 or the EN-EL18. And for the 18, you're going to have to have a substantial body for that battery. So I don't know how you're going to get, first of all, I don't think you're going to see a DF-like camera anytime soon. And, and we've talked about this before. It's going to cost as much as any other camera. Don't think it's going to be cheaper because it wouldn't have video in it because there are lower sales on a camera like that. It's going to be expensive, I think. But back to what we're talking about as far as the sensor goes, it's interesting. I got to go check it out. I don't know if anybody else has seen that, but didn't see anybody post about it in here. Uh, Fell says uh, it'll be super hard to get, though, if it comes out in October. You know, Phil, if we base everything, if we base this on everything Nikon's done to date, uh, or at least recently, it will be hard to get. And that's why I go back to if this thing gets announced or there's any leak of it and there's enough substantial information, shops may start a list for it. So anybody that would want it, I would keep watching uh, for whatever details come out and, and get on a list quick. But the other side of that is Nikon could be maybe they've they will have produced enough of these bodies not to satisfy everybody because the the it, it'll be a, a big sell uh, for Nikon i mean this is going to be a high selling body i think uh, but maybe they'll uh, have produced enough to get that initial surge out to everybody and then we have fewer waiting in line so it doesn't take 6 months 12 months or whatever to get the camera so we'll see we'll see uh, your thoughts, Mr. Jeffrey? I tell you, there's there so many directions they could go, and they could snooker us all and come out with with two bodies instead of one. I mean, they, and 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 you don't know what combination that could be. It could be the the Pro APS-C uh, body and a, and a, you know, Z six, three or Z eight, or could be a Z six, three and a Z eight. But, uh, I, I think they're going to, they're going to surprise us with some kind of a combo. Either it's going to be a, a, an amazing camera lens combo, or it's going to be a couple different camera bodies, but you, you know, you can't predict with them and they're, like you said, I think they're clamping down on everybody. And I think the competition, you know, Nikon's back in the game again now. And I think uh, they're, they're not, they're, they're back in the game. And I think Canon and everybody else is going to be a little bit more protective and, and not so free to spill the beans anymore either. So I think it's just going to be interesting to see once again, that, um, the leapfrogging effect that we had, you know, back when we were younger, it was always one guy out doing the other one with every next camera that came out. So I think we're, we're back into that game again, and it'll be interesting to see how Sony responds too. Yep. I mean, it, it's hard to keep coming out with so many different bodies when you really don't have the market that you had even a few years ago. I mean, you're yeah. just not selling 
it, it, you know, unless you come out with so much great stuff that you totally flip it around and you go from 5 million camera sales a year to, to 10 million ca camera sales a year, but uh, they got to be careful. They, they could overextend and get themselves in trouble as well. Yep. No doubt about it. Uh, it remains to be seen how, how, yeah. you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Come October. I'm just happy. Something's coming. Okay. We yeah. don't even have that confirmed, but I feel confident in saying something's coming in October and, and I'm going to be happy to see it. And I know all Nikon shooters are going to be happy to see it. Maybe not so many that bought a Z nine or two Z nines or whatever. They're fine because they bought them for a specific reason. I won't say everybody did. Some people didn't know how to turn it on, which really surprised me. But uh, uh, so many people are waiting for that intermediate body, you know, something, you know, smaller than the Z9. And I know a lot of people are wanting something a little bit larger than the Z7, Z6 body size. So it, it, this is going to be really interesting to see what they do. Um, I, I'm... I'm kind of excited about it. I hope everybody else is too. Uh, I mean, I, I can ima imagine the effect if they hit they they hit the nail on the head, and everybody that has been is continuing to shoot with their D850s and have been holding off finally yeah. say, you know what, that that camera is great, and it's at a price point where I can afford it, and if they're yeah. in that. Thirty-five to thirty-eight hundred dollar price range. Well, they paid thirty-five hundred bucks when the D850 first came out. So if they could get a camera within three hundred dollars of that, you know, years later, they're they're going to go for it. They're going to yeah. switch. Well, there are a lot of people that have been saving since the Z9. Yeah. You know, putting money yeah. away, waiting for the camera that's going to follow it. So. You're right. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's going to it's going to sell in the high numbers. No doubt about it. Yeah. I think the cost will be reasonable. But, you know, man, October is going to be a barn burner. Uh, yeah. You know, if it's all crickets, it's going to be people are going to begin to get disgruntled. But then I think it's just going to drop on us. I think this may be a well kept secret. So because we have nothing to uh, bank on right now. Take care, Charles. Thanks for hanging in this long with his brother and uh good night we'll see you in the next one excuse me i got hiccups now that's great <laughs> uh, uh da, 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 da. well you wishing. know we talk about uh whether shortages of parts and stuff like that well i can i can validate there's still shortages of parts because i just did a status check today on my 500 pf that's in for repair and it went from the category of being in the shop to being, uh, what do they call it, uh, on a parts hold. So they don't have the parts to fix it, apparently. So who knows when I'm going to get it back. Oh. And, uh, and 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 uh, camera parts aren't the only problem. I went, I think I might have mentioned it last week. I went to a Outback for dinner, and they didn't have any baked potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a big sign on the front door due to supply issues or whatever. They had no baked potatoes. You know, yeah, you where is all that coming from? I noticed it too. Is it a special kind of baked potato? I mean, there, there's a grocery store two miles away. I'm not even two miles away from them. Send yeah. a guy to go there, buy a bag of potatoes for crying out loud. It's funny you mention it because my wife <laughs> went to the store today. She came back and she said, you know, there are very few canned goods in the vegetables, you know, or whatever. I said, what do you mean? She said, it was kind of like it was a year and a half ago. I thought, well, oh, that's weird. Are you sure it isn't just the store? I don't know. So <laughs> where's this coming from? I don't know. But we don't need to go down that road. Uh, uh Hmm. Hassan says that uh, it's not really. He says Lumix rumors are even uh, rarer than Z8. <laughs> Lumix is very good at keeping leaks from spilling out. So he's, he says, I'm used to it now. Well, I think it's a new thing in the Nikon camp. I, I think that Nikon has cracked down. We'll find out. We'll, we'll see. You know what? By the end of this month, or, well, September, I should say, 
by the if we haven't heard anything by the end of September, the Nikon has really clamped down on those NDAs. Or maybe nothing is coming, but I have I, I still believe something is coming. And you know what? I'd almost like it to be a surprise. I really would. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch up again. Uh, oh, here we go. So Gustavo says, Chuck, the rumor came from Nikon China posting of the high resolution pictures, uh, 6670 by, what's it, 10,000? Wow, 67 megapixel. Wow. Hmm. Well, who knows what that is, but maybe that's it. Maybe that is a new sensor uh, Nikon's looking at or whatever. Don't know. Don't know. Yep, Fuji is about to drop, or so so it seems, a 40 megapixel APS-C camera. Yep. Uh, let's see. Well, Robert's questioning why does Z9, why doesn't the Z9 offer uncompressed files as Z7 does? I, I think it came down to the technology is so good now that uh, they can they can do some compression on that file with no loss in quality and it allows you to not you know fill up your card as fast and allows you not to have uh, such such uh, a strain on your uh, hard drive capability or whatever so i don't know that it was a bad move i mean i I shoot high efficiency star all the time and the quality is perfect for me. <laughs> so there's Yaman saying this whole NDA secrecy crap made me buy a 5D Mark II instead of a 5D Mark III for the same price a few months before the official announcement from Canon. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough. It, it's definitely tough. Um, you know, it, it's tough to wait. And, and you know what? And I've had a few people ask me, do you really think I should, I could get a Z7 II right now or a Z6 II right now at this price, which is a good price, of course, they're, they're quoting. And, and they ask, should I wait? And, you know, that's a tough question for me to answer. First, I can only say what I would do right now. And you guys know how I feel. If I was waiting for that camera, I hadn't I didn't, I didn't buy the Z9 for whatever reason. I would be waiting. Uh, but that doesn't mean anybody else should, because I don't want to be the one that says wait and then nothing happens. Uh, and then they passed up an opportunity for a camera at a, at a great price. Well, a as Matt Irwin would say, it's all about your bloody use case. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. if, if that if the Z7 II or a Z6 II checks all the boxes for what genre and, and what type of pictures you want to take and you can get a good deal on one, then why not why not get it now? Because yeah. it's if it does what you need it to do, what are you gonna do? Wait for the next one to come out and maybe it costs a thousand dollars more. I mean, is is well, is, yeah. What's I out mean, there now will work for you. Save the thousand bucks and buy a lens if you got that extra thousand bucks. So even saying that, though, you, you can go down the wrong road. You know, yeah. at giving that advice because then, say the Z six three comes out, it's twenty five or twenty eight hundred dollars, which would be a price increase for the Z six. You know, body uh, twenty eight hundred dollars, but it does all the magic things, and you just bought a Z six <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, you got it cheaper, but now you're just as mad because you didn't wait. So it's a tough, it's a tough question to answer. You know, depends uh, how old you are, right? Huh? Depends how old you are. I hate to say it. Well, no, you're you know, right. You're you know, right. For some of us, we got to buy it now so we get some use yeah. out of it. <laughs> if, if I'm on the last third of the yardstick, yeah, I'm not gonna wait forever. Yeah. If I'm on the first 30 yard stick, oh what the heck, I can wait. But if I'm on the you know <laughs> if I'm on the last third, I might not want to wait a year, two years, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Hey Jeff, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Same here, man. But uh 
Yeah, that that's you and I. Uh, obviously, there are people that, well, probably un, under different NDAs or whatever, but there are people that are willing to take a chance on busting that NDA just for some kind of notoriety or whatever, or, hey, you didn't hear it from me kind of person and uh, break their NDA just by leaking something. I just wonder if, though, they've cracked down on that and there are people out there that uh, are afraid to do it now. Maybe they've made a made a uh, example of some of them, not not publicly, but you know what? We know it was you or whatever, and, you know, no more information. You don't get to test anything anymore or whatever. Or, or if it's an employee, that's even a bigger deal because that could mean losing your job or being prosecuted for breaking an NDA. Oh man. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Heading down the list again. Sorry. Got behind two to 600 Caesar saying, yeah, a lot of people waiting for that lens. No doubt about it. I guess they thought that maybe it would, uh, Maybe it would stifle sales of the primes they wanted to sell. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a possibility. People who are going to buy a 400 millimeter prime, even the uh, 4.5 version of that, I think would have stuck to the that buying that prime versus buying a a uh, uh, oh shoot uh, a zoom. The one to four, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if it comes out soon. I hope that it does because I look, I'm not buying it. I'll let you guys know, but I really want it out as soon as possible because there are so many people I know waiting for that lens and, and they've received, they've seen every other uh, super telephoto except for that. And yeah. that's, that that's a budget point for them. And yeah. I understand it. Yeah, they have not gotten the affordable lens with the reach that they want. They need it. Yeah, here you go. I love it, Tim. C8 released in <laughs> October, November. Nikon publishes apology for unprecedented demand that was unforeseen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If they do that, they're lying because I know they watch these streams and videos and all the comments. Well, we didn't know it would sell that well. Right. <laughs> Again, then, you know what? Fire your marketing department. <laughs> if that's true. Oh. Uh, he worded that pretty well. Maybe he's the one that wrote it for him to begin with. <laughs> oh, man. He's heard it so much he has it memorized. We all have, right? I really remember hearing that with that 500 yeah. PF. It seems like that is what I remember more than any other product Nikon's produced is when that came out and they started immediately backpedaling on, we didn't know that it would be this popular. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. It says I come from the future. I can corroborate Tim Honor. That's great. Uh, uh, Joe Stroud. Here you go. They can send me all the cameras and lenses they want. I won't say a word. You know how hard it would be to have a, a Z8 or a uh, wh whatever, some other uh, prolific lens and not be able to talk about it. You, I, for me, I'd have to shut the stream down <laughs> <laughs> until they announced it. Oh, that would be tough. Uh uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, heading down the list here. I I hope Fro is not Nikon's marketing department. I hope they I hope they cut out that stuff. Yeah, G yeah. give give it to some people that are out there shooting day in day out, earning a living. Um, and and uh, give it to those people, people that aren't recognized yet, maybe for for what they're doing, but they're out there shooting and. You know, don't don't just go for somebody because he's got a lot of subscribers. I mean, that's kind of tacky. You know? you know, this this is interesting comment here by Jet Photo. That's why Fuji had to release a pro body. The fanboys weren't pushing them forward enough with retro bodies. They look cool, but not realistic in pro work. Fuji had to move forward. You know what? And, and 
I, I guess that's what I'm, I've been trying to do. Uh, I'm just late to the game to try to uh, get information out there so Nikon can latch onto it, not just for me, but from the stream and all the people that are in the stream. And, and that's why we, you know, we're Nikon centric, as I said before, but again, I think all brands are great. It's just not, you know, Nikon is my brand. Um, and I'm not a fanboy. If I was, I sure wouldn't be beating Nikon up all the time about their marketing. But you, do you think, uh, Jet, that that was uh, in response to the the consumers uh, saying, hey, enough of this. We want something more pr uh, pronounced. We want a pro-type body. That's interesting. Well, I, I think, you know, the fact that they're locked into APS-C, and yes, they have their medium format ones, but we're going to push that aside for the, the second here and just say, you know, they've been pretty clear that they didn't want to do full frame uh, cameras. So at some point, the full frame cameras start having so much capability that I would think it's going to eat into their camera sales uh, just because of the features, not not just because it's a full frame uh, uh, camera. So they, they have to they have to come out with new features. They, they were probably in the corner. They had to come out with some new features some well, faster cameras and stuff just to keep, especially since they're sticking with the APS-C, they, they have to do something. Well, I'm glad they did actually. I really am because again, that goes back, that, that's thrown in the face of all the other manufacturers. You know, here's what we can do with an APS-C body. You could do the same. I mean, they're not saying it that way, yeah. but you know, you can look at it that way. And yes, Roy, the 850 with the 500 PF lens is still a great combo. I will agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I like this comment. Uh, Joe Stroud, after using my Z9 for the last uh, several months, I don't like the Z6 anymore. <laughs> I love the 24 megapixel sensor, but I don't like the feel of it anymore. And Joe, I've got a question for you. Did you have flagship bodies before the Z9? And the reason I ask that is because a lot of people that shot with flagship bodies, there's just something about it. Not a, you know, it, it's different than a camera body with a, a battery grip on it. Um, and I just wonder if you'd had a flagship because flagship guys, I think immediately, uh, jumped on the Z nine because here it is, this is the camera. I didn't think I'd see another full body flagship camera and, and here it is. So I'm, I'm just wondering if you'd had them before. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, and then uh, as a comparison on the APS-C side, you're talking about the capabilities of the D500 with the 2 to 5. And that is true. And I, I had the 2 to 5 for a while. I used it on my D850, and and I got great shots with it. I mean, wasn't wasn't super fast to acquire initially, but once you locked on, I mean, and I, and I got thousands of pictures I love with the, D, with the 2 to 500. And you can't beat the price of that lens for the money. Great. Hey, hey, Ted, in reference to holding back what? Because, you know, you, you left that wide open. <laughs> There's a whole lot I think Nikon's holding back. I'm just wondering which item you're talking about. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, Phil, you don't have to worry about me. I, I don't watch them. And, and again, I, I, I know this is going to rub some people wrong. I, I respect what they do as far as a YouTube business, but uh, they don't have anything to say that I, 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 I want to hear or care to hear. But, you know, I wouldn't tell other people don't go listen to them or watch them or whatever. But that'll be easy for me. But I'll hear about it. I'm going to hear about it from people. What do you think of what Tony said? Or what do you think about what Fro said? And I'm going to have to ask, what did they say? Because I'm not going to go watch them. Uh, we just, we got to just play dumb and just say, Tony who? Who? I don't know any Tony. I don't know yeah. any Tony. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, the thing with the uh, – that you're not seeing a lot. The problem is I, I sometimes I think we forget that Nikon was in dire straits for a while. I mean, they're 
financials were not good. And unfortunately, you know, I mean, I think they've recovered nicely. Uh, they had to be very aggressive. And one could argue maybe they became a little too aggressive because they ended up basically giving back uh, or, or well, I don't think they had full ownership of some of the manufacturing plants that were in Japan. And basically, uh, they they walked away from those and the government probably used them for, for something else now. But uh, if, if you were easy to be a Monday morning quarterback now and say, well, they never should have done that because they would have had been able to keep up with everything. Um, and that may or may not be true, depending on, you know, you may... Part shortages could be due to material shortages just because, you know, whoever they get a part from, maybe they can't get the material to make that part. So it's all yeah. trick anyway. So, uh, but I'm just saying they had a tough time. They got out of it and everybody should be really thrilled to death that we're in the position we're in now. But it's, uh, unfortunately, their manufacturing capability did take a, take a hit when they had to give up those plants gonna take yeah. a while I, I wish we could learn the truth behind all that and and know exactly how many camera bodies are officially sold and, and whatever yeah. but obviously manufacturers aren't going to make that transparent for us yeah. why doesn't the z9 offer uncompressed files the z7 does i can't answer that robert i can't answer that maybe somebody can uh uh maybe give you an idea in the chat uh I commented on that earlier, and I just said I think that they they were focusing more on the fact that their compression technology doesn't uh, the high efficiency star or whatnot. It does not degrade the quality, and it gives you a much smaller file to handle. Yeah, and they focused on that. I mean, to 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 offer it. I mean, that, that that becomes an argumentative thing. I mean, that's a point the Sony guys will like to point out and say, oh, well, you know, we don't, we don't, comp you know, we can give you an uncompressed file. And it's like, yeah, but is the quality any better than Nikon's compressed file? And I would argue probably not. So, hey, I'd rather have the smaller file if the quality isn't any different. Yeah. Uh, what's the real want for a Z8, a camera similar in specs for the Z9, but smaller? Exactly, Hassan. That is exactly what the want is. People, you know what? It doesn't have to be a baby Z9. It doesn't have to be the same sensor, but it has to perform, a, when I say as well as the Z9, I'm talking about bringing that new data movement, you know, the XP7 processor, because that unlocks a lot of things in a camera, you know, the processing power. So, yeah, I, I think that's what everybody wants. And the other piece to it is, is those that don't have a Z9 couldn't buy a Z9 or just don't want the full body, uh, the vertical grip, built-in vertical grip. They're waiting on that smaller body. And, uh, you know, they've had to suffer. I'll say it this way. They've had to suffer through all the Z9 mania and realizing that they could have that tech in a smaller body you know, if Nikon would just produce it. So I think that's what it's really about. All the, all the mania about a Z8, but you know what? It won't matter. Whatever the, whatever they uh, come up with in October, everybody, there are going to be so many people that are happy about it. And there'll be some people that won't, uh, you know, people that don't want video in a camera are not going to be happy, <laughs> but that's, that's the price we pay now. They, they got to learn to give that argument up because th that's never going to go away at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, somewhere it, down the road, they may, may, they may make that niche camera, you know, the DF like camera, but don't expect it to be cheaper. It, it's not going to be cheaper. Uh, ref waiting. If your current camera works, still meets your needs. Wait and see uh, where this shakes out. If it doesn't work, then buy one of the great cameras out there now. I agree with that, uh, Jeff. And that's what I've actually said to some of the people that have said, uh, you know, asked, well, what should I do? Uh, personally, if, if, we, if we were six months out from when we expected something, I would say just get the camera you want right now. You know, I, I'd feel good saying that to somebody. Even though even then, six months later, they may say, why did I buy this? I could have bought that. But I feel more comfortable uh, saying it 
hang on, my other screen just went to sleep or something here. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, but, you know, we're one month away, really, from some, maybe some tangible, uh, well, I say tangible leaks. We don't know if those are real or not either, but more tangible information than we have right now. So if you can wait a month, I think it's well spent sitting back and waiting to see what comes. So I, I'm with you. I'm with you, Jeff. Uh, let me hide that. All right. I got to go get coffee. Of course, go to the little boy's room. I know everybody loves hearing that. I need to get me a little thing that pops up on the screen. I know everybody would love that, right? Let's have a coffee so, mug with steam coming out of it, you know. And, yeah. All right. So I, I'm I'm way behind here. Uh, 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 all the official pre-announcements came. What was that? Official pre-announcements came, uh, or lately came exactly one week before the formal announcement. Oh, yeah. And oh, by the way, get ready. We may go through the teaser videos. Maybe. I don't know. So, <laughs> but we did know about the Z9. That's the one time. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen Nikon do that, at least for as long as I've been shooting Nikon actually making a, a development announcement, a, an official development announcement. That was, that, that shocked me. However, I thank Nikon for that because that gave me the opportunity to get my Z9. I could get my order in that much quicker. But anyway, um, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're, who knows, days away possibly of uh, some kind of a, a pre-announcement or something. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. All right, I'm going to skip down here to the bottom. Uh, and Jeffrey, take control for a minute. Let me go get me some more coffee like I need it. But <laughs> I'll try not I'll to right crash back. into a wall or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at some of the comments here. And okay, I'm going to pick out one of Roy's. Everybody should learn everything about their present camera before buying a new one. This makes for better images. Absolutely. Um, I met a person the other day and I, I had one interpretation and my friend had a different interpretation, but he, um, I'm using my 100 to 400 right now with the 1.4 telly because my 500 PF out for repair. So uh, this other gentleman who we must have talked a half hour to just about what was in the park, you know, where to go, where to look, that type of thing. He had a Z9 and he had the same lens without the telly on it. And uh, he says, well, I bought this lens instead of a 500 PF um, because uh, that's what was, um, you know, recommended by uh, somebody I want that he watched on YouTube. And, um, uh, Right now, I'm drawing a blank, the guy's name, and I should be ashamed of myself because I think I have him on my on my feed. But it's it's the um, it's the fair it's the well known guy in Florida that shoots the Ospreys all the time. But anyway, he he recommended oh he thought the one to four hundred was a better fit than just the five hundred PF, so he went and he bought that. And then my my friend thought that he also bought the Z nine at the same time because of that person's recommendation. Um, but it makes you wonder, yeah, Mark Smith, that's it. Thank you, Jeff and Leslie. Uh, but it makes you wonder, um, you know, I don't want to get nosy. I wasn't going to say, well, so is this your first mirrorless camera being the Z9? Because uh, just my opinion, that is not a camera that should be anybody's first camera. You know, if you haven't been shooting for a while and you just dive into a Z9, I mean, you're in for a lot of hurt. I mean, there's just so much learning and so much massaging that you end up doing with that camera in terms of your menu settings and things as you go along. Um, you know, even an experienced shooter, and I consider myself an experienced shooter, uh, it took me a while to get used to it. And I'm still changing things every once in a while. And I still have features that I haven't used. Um, mainly because I don't, uh, you know, uh, one would say, oh, it'd be fun to try every feature on the camera. But there's just some that, uh, for my style of shooting and what my subjects are, I, I don't have a uh, 
a, a need to use, you know, some of the features on the camera. Um, but uh, I, I just think, man, that's not a, that's not a beginner's camera body. That that's something that can actually frustrate somebody to the point where they they sell it and they don't even shoot pictures anymore. And let's see, I'll look at some more of the uh, talk here. Well, I, I think uh, I want to thank you guys for your comments, kind comments uh, about you know, liking my my new background uh, to my office slash spare bedroom and uh, commenting on my photography. I appreciate it. Uh, and I do appreciate very much uh, everyone that comes and visits the channel and says hello and has a comment. And, uh, and I'll reiterate that I, I have no problem with constructive criticism, I, I actually welcome it. So when anybody's on my channel and they're watching any of my videos, feel free to say, hey, you know, um, you might want to try doing it this way or you might try uh, a different setting or can you get some pictures of X, Y, Z? I, I, do you have any of those uh, uh, types of birds in, in your area that you could capture? And, and you know, you want a certain kind of bird and it's down here and I haven't shown it on a video, I'll look for the darn bird and I'll try to get some images for you. Um, a friend of mine wanted, um, she was into, sent her a few pictures as a gift, um, just out of the blue, a uh, tufted titmouse uh, photo in a um, southern chickadee. She liked chickadees. And I had a few chickadee pictures, but I didn't really like them too much. They they were okay. So I spent the whole day one day, and all I did was track chickadees all day long. And I don't know how many chickadee pictures I took, but I don't have to tell you. They, they jump around so much branch to branch to branch. They're a hard bird to get a good shot of because, you know, sometimes even when, you, even when the bird stops moving, you know, the head's turned away. There's a branch, you know, poking up from the top of the head or going across the eye or whatever. Uh, it doesn't take much for branches to basically block a good part of that bird because it's so small. But I did end up getting something that she liked, and she was thrilled to get a picture of it. So I would encourage you guys to, uh, you know, not only share your work uh, next week when Chuck has the photo um, event, is... Uh, you know, make a print and send it to a friend or a family member. They'll really appreciate it. They really will. And let's see. <laughs> Star channel, grits and cameras, <laughs> Hassan. Yeah. <laughs> you could go, hey, you could create it. Everybody should create a channel, right? Let me tell you, you'd appreciate how much work Chuck puts, puts into what he does. And I give him a ton of credit to do two live streams a week is got to be extremely taxing. So, I mean, I think we should all give him a thumbs up and, and make sure you give him a like tonight because uh, creating content is challenging, but doing two live streams and being a, a guest host on Vahagan's channel uh, many a times when Vahagan's doing a show it's all encompassing. I mean, it, it's, uh, you, you love the hobby, you love what you do, but it, you know, it's it now it's like an, it's just an unpaid job in a way too, but your love of the subject matter keeps you, keeps you going. So, um, I think everybody should, you know, really give Chuck a round of applause for what he does. All right. That's enough, uh, admiration for Chuck. He, he doesn't like that. <laughs> Troy saying one of my lights has gone out in the background. Yes, it has. Those are, unfortunately, those are rechargeable lights, USB rechargeable lights. And we've been on beyond their uh, 
I guess, beyond their capability. So I'll probably be losing lights in my cabinet here one at a time. <laughs> All right. Um, throw that up there, Tim. We do have a, a group on Facebook, uh, Nikon Amateurs Group, but it's open to everybody. That was a title I had for uh, a long time, but anyway, it's open for everybody. And uh, it, is, it is a private group. It, it's you can, It can be seen, but it's a private group only to keep out some of the bots and things like that. But you're welcome to join. Uh, all right. Okay, so... I'm going to comment on Gustavo's uh, question. Yeah. Any luck on taking photos of nesting sea turtles? No, there there were nest site ne uh, nesting sites, and what I did was um, I went one night to see what they call a uh, an excavation of a site where the turtles have already hatched. They have to wait three days, and they they dig it out, they uncover it, they count how many shells they are, there were, they count how many unhatched eggs, they record all the data, they, rec they write down if there's any that didn't make it, and sometimes they'll find a few that hadn't gotten out yet, and then they will, they will take them, and then, you know, everybody gets a free shell when you get to see them walk down, you know, let them go walk down to the, to the water. Unfortunately, uh, there were not any that were alive. Um, there was only one one that did not hatch. So I think there were 120 eggs in the nest. But it's it's really, really hard to um, be there when they're hatching. Nobody can tell you when they're going to hatch. And it's usually during the moonlight hours. So it's usually after midnight. Occasionally, just as the sun comes up, but mostly under moonlight conditions. And and these nesting areas are in the parks, so the parks are closed, so you can't get in there at night. And they would never let you put a, a light on, you know, like a headband with a light or anything, because that'll mess up the turtles. So uh, it's it's going to be really, as they say, you know what kind of luck if you just happen to be there at 6 o'clock when the sun is coming up and, and some start to come out of the nest. And that would be your only opportunity. So it's really 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 rare that you would get a, a turtle uh, a picture of a turtle going to the water down here anyway no you're 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 on it there uh jeffrey because i i wanted to break away from all the z8 talk and everything else because i know we have people in here that you know they shoot another brand and they're not really interested in that uh but from time to time obviously i'm going to talk about it uh Let's see. Let's see. So there is the uh, Nikon Amateurs Group page. And uh, again, I've got to find somebody to help me monitor that and get me some admins over there on that page. And if anybody that's on there already would like to volunteer to be an admin, we can make that happen. And real soon, I'm going to have to drop some uh, admins in uh, the live stream here. I vote for Jeffrey, whether he wants it or not, but I vote Jeffrey to be one. I want you guys to harangue him enough that he has to accept. <laughs> uh, ah, Jeff, uh, mama, mama snapping turtle. I, you know, it's funny you say snapping turtles. Um, I did get pictures of a, um, what do they call them down here? In New England, we call them painted turtles. Yep. Uh, down yep. here, down here, they call them sliders, I think, but they basically look exactly the same. And I did get uh, pictures of one of them laying eggs, but uh, not the um, all the all the turtles on the beach down here. I'm, I'm surprised. I thought there were some green turtle uh, nests, but they're all loggerhead turtles down here. And then I find I found out that. Um, they lay eggs on the beach that's behind all the hotels. Like when you come down to Myrtle Beach, you know, they're, they're building nests and laying eggs on the beachfront there where people are swimming and stuff. And they dig up those nests and they relocate them farther down the beach away from where the people are swimming. So I didn't realize they did that, but they have, they have tons and tons of volunteers down here to take care of those turtle eggs. 
I'll, I'll have 10 or more of the painted turtles, as they call them up here in, uh, in New England. I'll have 10 or more that lay their eggs in my side yard every year. And I've done my best to keep the raccoons from digging them up, but uh, it's almost impossible. I've gone as far to lay, as to lay concrete blocks over them for a few weeks just so maybe the scent goes away or something like that. And I've had a raccoon dig underneath the block to get to the eggs. I'm, I assume it's raccoons because I've got a bunch of raccoons here and I live right next to the water. So I think that's what's happening. But I've got some big, big uh, uh, snapping turtles, not alligator snapping turtles. I don't think they even exist up here. I don't know, but snapping turtles. Yeah. And uh, I've got some pictures of those, at least uh, standing on the bank, trying to shoot with, you know, a long lens and get them rolling when they were, I guess they're mating. I don't know, but uh, huge, huge claws on those things. So they probably, they're probably 18 <coughs> inches across. I know I don't want to get my hands near them. A lot of people go out, you know, down south, go out catching snapping turtles and alligator snappers and whatever. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, when I was young and foolish, of course, now I'm old and foolish. But when I was young and foolish, I would catch snapping turtles and I would sell them. People would buy them for turtle soup. Yep. Grab them by the tail and you had to keep you had to keep that head away from you because I don't know whether it's an old wise tale or a story just to scare your pants off. I don't know. But they used to say if you got bit by one, you could cut the head off and it and it would not release its grip. You'd have to go to the hospital to get it off of you. Now, whether that's all uh, make believe or not, I don't know. But uh, I certainly wouldn't want to get bit by one. Well, there, there's a significant difference between snapping turtles and alligator snapping turtles. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, it's it's safer to pick up an alligator snapper because their head doesn't extend beyond their shell long enough for them to rotate their head back to your hand. You can grab them by the front of the uh, shell and, and the back of the shell and pick them up. I'll tell you this, if you ever catch one on a fishing line and your line's strong enough, man, them, them dudes are tough to drag up a bank. They are strong. But uh snapping turtles have a long neck and they can actually turn their head back on their shell so those are those are the ones that really stay stay away from <laughs> turtle soup uh not a big fan of it i've eaten turtle soup before um i've eaten a whole lot of uh, uh domestic critters you know in my life growing up in the south that was kind of a norm um now, uh, one thing that I didn't like, only because of the thought of it, but uh, actually the taste wasn't bad. I know this sounds terrible. Squirrel brains and scrambled eggs. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I have eaten it uh, a few times. Uh, it's just the thought that bothers me about it. But, yeah. And, and now bothers me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then in my travels, my travels, <laughs> yeah, in my travels, I've eaten some strange things, too. I was once presented with the, uh, you know, the, 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 the best part of the goat, the eyes, on one of my trips. And, yeah, I ate them because that was what we do, you know, when we're out making friends <laughs> it was like i gotta tell you it was like eating grapes <laughs> but it didn't taste anything like a grape oh man the things we do man the things we do the, the, the sad thing is if you end up in a country where it's considered an insult if you don't accept the food exactly eat yeah. it Boy, that puts you in a real pickle if it's something that you really, really don't want to eat. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And, you know, I can I can try anything once or whatever. I just don't have to say I love it, so I get more. <laughs> but, yeah, fried squirrel, good. Yep. Rabbit, good. Yep. I don't know how we are got on this in a photography discussion, but <laughs> here we go. Oh man! Think of talking about critters. 
bringing up critters. Well, I guess we photograph critters a lot, so I guess we yeah. can talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does, Gustavo. It tops the grits discussion. And yeah. I don't like grits either. I think I've said that. I was the only one in the family that didn't like grits. My grandmother was real nice to me, though. She'd make me cream of wheat. <laughs> oh, man. So what else you guys want to talk about? Hmm. Uh. Ah, Yaman saying that uh, it's not just a story. Uh, snapping turtle had a metal clamp, and the gator wouldn't let go even after the head was 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 gone. Yep. Yeah, they're they're mean mean dudes, no doubt about it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I failed to mention that is another delicacy that I had. <laughs> I had that in Jordan. Well, remember Indiana Jones had to eat monkey brains, remember? Yep. <laughs> Amazon says, I don't ever want to hear you all complain about eating grits anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Uh, so I think I told this story talking about shooting. Uh, Jeff just talked about he, he shot animals with a rifle or a shotgun or whatever uh, before. Now he shoots them with a camera. So I'm out back, middle of the winter. I'm just out back walk, seeing how thick the ice is so I can figure out whether I can walk out on it to take photos. And uh, one of my neighbors uh, is walking down the creek. Well, I guess that gave me the go-ahead to walk out on the ice. But anyway... He said, what are you doing back here? Which I thought was weird. Like, are you the police or what? But he goes, uh, he said, uh, uh, he asked me what I was doing. I said, well, I, I come back here and I shoot ducks. He goes, oh, you, you can't do that here. I, I knew immediately what he thought. I said, no, I photograph ducks. I don't shoot ducks. Oh, and he walked on as if he was upset that he, he he couldn't catch me doing something wrong or whatever. I just thought it was funny, but that's nowadays it's, it, it, you have to be careful when you're talking about, well, I'm going down the city to shoot people. <laughs> you know, you're what? Okay. Photograph people. Um, yeah. And they have a lot of t-shirts that, you know, that you could buy to say, I shoot people and, of course, there's a camera on the shirt, but right. sure, if people read the read the first sentence, they get all nervous before they realize that you have a camera on the shirt as well. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of raccoons here too, Albert. Actually, okay, shoot me, man. I, I actually feed them leftovers quite often. I take them leftovers out and put them out in the yard. Kind of like my raccoons. They're used to me now, too. That's kind of funny. Uh, fried oysters? Absolutely, man. Love fried. Rolled fried oysters, man. Mm -mm -mm. Love them. I can eat raw oysters, but not a big fan of it. However, they're okay, but I love fried oysters. Uh, Rich, there you go. Back to the subject at hand. Let's talk about Z lenses that don't work with pure mechanical shutter. Okay. 24 to 120 on the Z6, Z7 is one of them. Wow. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Hmm. I guess the question is, is have other people experienced the same thing? Was that a fluke or is that uh, an accepted uh, fact? Period. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard it. Never heard about that. Me either. Anybody else have experience with that that has the... 24 to 120 or, or heard about it. Uh, yeah. Let's not talk about mountain oysters. I'm with you there, Jeff. That's where I draw the line to. Although they aren't as the, the taste isn't so bad. Again, it's one of the, it's just the thought. However, you can get them in a restaurant down in New York city. Yeah. You know, Jeffrey Zakarian, his restaurant 
of course, it'll cost you four hundred dollars to go in and have it have a meal there. And anybody, if I'm gonna pay four hundred dollars for a meal, that's the last thing I'm I want to order. But they're there. Uh, Gustavo has an interesting thing. He says a few weeks ago, Long Rider came up with the topic of encrypting photographer and camera body in the picture files, not only on the file info. Oh, yeah. it would be, be neat if you had a, had something in the menu system of the camera where you could where where you could manipulate what shows up in the in the in the file name or in the metadata that would be that would be a, that would be kind of a neat thing to be able to do hmm. so this kind of brings me to a topic that comes up every now and then people talking about what they'd like to see in newer cameras and that is the uh some sort of security device I'm not so sure I want to see that in a camera. I know uh, the good that could come of it, but I'm not so sure it would be as great as we think it would. But uh, having a thumbprint reader or a uh, a code or something you had to punch into the camera to use it, uh, I think people are just saying that it might uh, make people think if they know that they can't use a camera, that they wouldn't steal it or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, people that are stealing cameras and that probably aren't that savvy. And I, it would be a while before they would catch on and think, well, I, you know, I can't steal a camera because of that reason. If there was some way that it could, you could track the camera, that might be, uh, you know, a good thing. Um, but every camera does have a footprint in the metadata. So uh, you can't track that, but you can search for, uh, that metadata, uh, you know, online on a photography site or something like that. So I, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about you it. You could track your iPhone, right? Or you could track your laptop, your Mac. You can track track some of the Mac products. If it was not in your possession, you'd be able to find out where it is. And, and you know, they could, they could put a locating methodology in a camera if they wanted to i don't know how they, much it costs but they could yeah, do it they could but since nobody can get into your i uh your apple products um you know without uh the thumbprint reader your thumbprint or uh the uh, passcode then most of the iphone or most of the uh, computers i think are just uh, for data mining you know after the fact which yeah. the FBI, everybody says they can't do, but they can. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just, I'm on the fence about that. If they come up with some great technology, I guess I'd be for it, but not well, sure. They, that if, if you, even if you couldn't use the camera, they still, they would still steal it for the lens, the lenses or yeah. spare parts or spare parts. Yeah. It's just like so. stealing a catalytic converter off a car. I guess right. they'd have to sell me on it, you know, if they come out with something like that. What I don't want is an extra step in using my camera every time. You know, every time you turn it off and turn it back on, having to go through another process. To, maybe it's not a big process, but I think everybody talks about the fact they, they want their camera to be responsive, meaning you turn it on, it's ready to go. One of the complaints about the Z9 right now is it goes into battery saving mode after a few minutes and the startup time after you hit the shutter button or something, it, it's lengthy enough that I guess some people have missed opportunities to shoot. Right, but you you can change how how long it stays on before it shuts shuts off. In the menus, you can adjust that time. Uh, you know. I think in the menu system you can you can control how long the display stays on before it goes off and goes into sleep mode or whatever. Hey, I'm glad to hear somebody else watches Sean Cameron. I love watching him. I think he's he's really entertaining, smart guy too. But uh, he, I saw that video talking about that after six months when the Z90 found that the white balance casts a green or blue hues when the environment is rich in either color. Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't really noticed that, Yaman, but I'll pay attention to it now the next time I'm out just to see if that's the case. 
But uh, if you guys haven't been over to Sean Cameron's page or YouTube channel, you might want to just check it out. He's just a, he's just a happy guy. As a matter of fact, he had said he was going to be on, come on the show. I asked him a while back and he was in busy part of his season. So he couldn't do it right away, but I'm sure he's forgotten about it by now. And I'm not going to badger him real good guy. Sean Cameron on YouTube. Uh, for all you dog shooters, you know, kennel, uh, shooters, agility, uh, you know, dog agility, uh, events and things like that. He shoots a lot of those. That's not all he shoots, but he shoots a lot of those. Uh, yeah, true enough, Roy, true enough. Uh, um, so anybody going to be around, uh, Nashville or maybe on the Northern side of Nashville or vicinity Nashville? Uh, let's see, September. Make sure I get the dates right. I think it's like the um, 20th, maybe the 20th through the 25th, somewhere in there. I'll be there also going to my reunion, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, I'll be down there. I'd like to at least have an opportunity to get to meet anybody that's close. I'm really looking forward to moving down there and anybody that's in the area. I'd love to do some collabs and things like that. Jeff, you taking off, buddy? Thanks for dropping in, man. If you're taking off, yeah. always, always have a pleasure having you in here. And everybody needs to go check out Jeff and Leslie, uh, wildlife photography. Yeah. Another great channel. Yeah. Very relaxing. Some. Greg Therapy. Wilson, uh, David Moots, uh, yep. Steve. And, uh, boy, there, there's, there's a lot of channels that you could go to that have great content and, uh, absolutely don't, don't rule out the small guys. I'll tell you the small guys have some great content. <laughs> wow. Good, man. Jeff's going to be over in the smoky mountains. That ought to be some beautiful photography going on over there all right we got uh we got ron bigsby talking about uh dog photography could get the dog to hold the camera <laughs> uh i need to we, we need to talk uh mr roy bigsby into being an admin here what say you audience <laughs> night jeff good to see you man take it easy you know what you got to do is you got to put the GoPro on the dog's collar, and uh, and and then just just set it so that it automatically takes a picture every so so many seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see how long we've been on. Two hours and eighteen minutes. That's great. No, too much work. I'm lazy. Oh, man. <laughs> I hear you, Roy. I hear you. But I, I'm going to have to get some admins in here to kind of help out. We haven't seen any bots tonight. I hope I didn't jinx us. But I found something in Restream. <clears throat> and don't ask me how they did it. But they had they were on the approved list, <clears throat> these bots. And I found that uh, by searching around Restream, looking for some other things in the, in the comments and on, uh, uh, shoot, on uh, YouTube also. And I deleted them, and maybe that's helped us out. How they get in there, I don't know. Well, we, we haven't said any uh, words that sometimes might trigger on the show up either. We've been good. 
<laughs> yeah, but I'm not so sure that's it. I'm I'm thinking now that uh, you know they they find a way into YouTube as one of your approved sources or something like that, and uh, they just you know from periodically jump in and post all these things. So, well, hopefully that that stopped it. Seems like it has tonight anyway. I'm gonna have to check that quite frequently just to make sure that they haven't found a way into my YouTube channel. Filters, tripods, bays, etc. Absolutely. Absolutely. We kind of got on some of that the other night on, on at least, uh, well, we talked about bays. Uh, still going to talk. I have not talked to Moz, man. I need to talk to him. Um, I said I was going to, and I need to, to get Moz, man, uh, to come on the show and talk to us about storage and everything. Be a great talk for everybody, I think. I think everybody was energized when we were just briefly talking about it a few days ago or whenever it was. But, yeah, filters, tripods, yeah. Yeah, Start I mean, uh, you know, filter-wise, I mean, it'd be interesting to see. I used to put, um, what do you call it, the um, uh, circular polarizers on all my lenses. Yeah, do that anymore. I mean, I have circular polarizers for for all my lenses, but when I'm shooting at six in the morning, seven in the morning, I don't need to lose the the extra, you know, stop a light or whatever I'm going to lose with that being on there. And plus, it's it, you know, it's not bright enough to, for it to really do anything. So I wait until at least like ten o'clock in the morning if I'm still shooting at that hour, then I'll put it on. Because then, I, then I can see some benefit in using it, but I don't, I don't put it on and leave it on uh, every every minute that I'm shooting. So you know, <clears throat> that's that's a good point. I think uh, I think laziness is the reason I don't use filters a, as much as I should. I have uh, you know ND filters. Um, I have uh, uh, circular polarizers. And, and, you know, sometimes they do help out extremely well. And this goes back to something Joe McNally talked about when he was on uh, the Hoggins channel. You know, we can see a problem sometimes and we're going to work around it every way, but the way we should. And then yeah. we get home and we're, you know, disgusted because we knew what we should have done, but we didn't do it while we were on site. And I think filters can be a part of that as well. You know, the circular polarizer has its time and place. As you said, Jeffrey, maybe not early morning or low light, but uh, it does make a difference from time yep. to time. Um, so, so oh, it's yeah. For bringing out the saturation of the colors of leaves in the fall yep. or whatever, you know, when you got the sun hitting in a certain way, you can get rid of that shine and yep. really deepen everything up or, or get the reflection off the water, you know, or... What you, where I found it was good street photography, believe it or not, if you're if you're shooting um, a storefront, and let's just say they got you know big, you know all, almost all storefronts have big windows in front of it with their garments or whatever on the other side, and you and you don't want to have the reflections of the cars driving by or whatever, you know, put that polarizer on and angle your camera just right, and you can get rid of all that stuff. Yep. But if you don't have the polarizer on, then you're then you don't know what you're gonna have and you might not like the picture. Yep. So square filters, Tim's talking about he uses from time to time the Nisi. Um and for all you landscape photographers, I'm guessing you have a, a filter set because I've noticed when I was trying to do some, you know, just impromptu uh, landscape photos, you know, being able to use a uh what is it? A, a variable, not variable, but a half, uh, ND filter or whatever, being able to, uh, uh, you know, cut the, the sky, uh, the brightness of the sky in the background. Oh, the split uh, neutral D, uh, the split filters. That's split it. Yeah. Split ND. Yeah. Patchy, yeah, say hi to everybody. That's exactly right can't you can't replace a polarizer in photoshop even though nick collection says you can <laughs> because they have that but you're right you can't it, there, there's no way you can get the same effect 
Hey, Bob Parnell. Everybody meet Mr. Bob. Bob likes to shoot, uh, likes to shoot, uh, dogs and things like that. Uh, he was doing that for a while. Bob, you still up to that? Uh, so Bob, I know Bob from Salt Lake city. When I was out there doing all the training, I met Bob. Bob was uh, somebody that came out and helped us from time to time, uh, doing his part and what, he, what we needed done. But, uh, he's a great guy, Bob. I know you're still out in California. I just don't know where. Yeah. Yeah. People uh this comment from yaman is um seeing the metal frame of the filter in your photos they have they have slimline uh filter products now where the the metal is thinner and uh specially designed for wide angle lenses so that you do not you don't see it when you're taking a picture but it's a you know, once again, it's just it's just more money that you have to spend, you know, but they, they do make filters that are screw on uh, that will not uh, intrude on your image um, for wide yeah. angle shots. But they're they're a different breed of uh, filter. They're they're like slimline uh, filters. And of course, they're always uh, filter holders with filters, but they get expensive with, yeah. with good filters. Bob, he's from Sacra Ghetto. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, uh, you know, you mentioned a minute ago, uh, Roy, uh, talking about being able to use ND filters uh, for polarizer as well. Uh, you know, help me out. I'm not. I'm not understanding how to do that other than it just being an ND filter. Are you talking about two ND filters or, well, that wouldn't make sense either. You may learn me something, learn some other people something here. I think, so they, I have, I think they make, fil I think someone makes a filter that's like, it's like one filter stacked on the other and one of it's the ND and one of it's a polarizer. Okay. If I, I think somebody makes something strange like that. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with this most of the time, uh, Roy. I agree. I'm just too lazy or I leave the house if I'm going out somewhere and don't take it with me. And then I'm kicking myself for not bringing it along. So again, it goes back on my, for me, it goes back to being lazy. It doesn't take up any space. It's not heavy. I could put it in my uh, bag with me, but I don't know. That's why I'm not a pro photographer, guys. <laughs> well, one one a cheat a way of cheating. One thing I find is if I stay out too long, and let's say I'm getting a, getting a picture of a small bird, and the green leaves are a little bit too shiny, you could just go into um, Lightroom and dial down the luminance of the green, and that that will darken it up and get rid of the shine. So there are things you could do to cheat. It's the lumen, the luminosity control in Lightroom is great for getting rid of overly bright areas um, of any color that you that you may have in your in your picture. Because sometimes you just you know you forget your filter or you you don't think it's bright enough yet and you didn't put it on or what have you. But there there are ways to recover uh, without having to go into Photoshop. You know, I, I didn't know that the ND or variable. Oh, yeah, the variable ND filters are two polarized stacked polarizers stacked together. Okay, and you know what? I'm not opposed to the variable ND filters. I mean, you can overdo it, and then you get the proverbial X that shows up or whatever. Uh, and, and buying one that's halfway decent, not the cheapest uh, variable ND you can pick up also helps but you know where those are really helpful is in uh, video work i found that outside uh, they work extremely well for video uh, yeah and joe's talking about his uh, case magnetic filters are my go-to 
<laughs> and Roy says magnetic attachment filters are great until one falls off. I think that's just where you have to be careful, Roy. If you're using them, you just have to be, have to be cognizant of it because you're right. Uh, they don't just fall off on their own. They seem to be very stable, but a, a bump uh, on the end of the lens, you know, may be all it takes. Hopefully you notice when you do it. Uh, well, you know, you know, when the poles switch, they're going to fly off the lens anyway. <laughs> that's exactly right yeah. uh, Tim talking about he misses the 10 pin connector on his camera so he can use his shutter release cable well that's one of the things they brought back on the Z9 anyway Yeah, well, I've had somebody ask me what is that for <laughs> because it looks so analog you know 10 pin connector what is that for I tried to explain, but, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, f a couple of things that came to mind for me were, uh, remote, uh, wired remotes for the camera. And, uh, of course, uh, for flash, uh, a flash sync cable. Yeah. I, I use it for my, uh, my wireless triggered, uh, remote for the shutter release. <laughs> I screw, I screw it into the 10 pin. I have, I just have a button to push to take the picture when I want. It's great. Yeah. If you're doing a group photo that you want to be in, set your camera up on a tripod instead of using the self timer, you can sit there with the little clicker. Nobody sees it and hit the button, take the picture. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> hey James, good to see you in here, man. I guess you've been out enjoying the evening, but still good to see you in here. Uh, Mr. T mid. <laughs> just want to get me amped up. <laughs> Nikon sent you the Nikon Z30, huh? All right, man. No, I, I'm I'm curious to see how how it works. Uh, I've seen you know quite a few videos now, so I'm not as opposed to it as I was because I got you know I'm feeling confident that we're going to see a camera here in uh, October, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not in the market for it, but I can see where it would be nice as a camera in a in, in a studio like this for live streaming. I can see where it would be great. As a matter of fact, Demut's photography, Mr. David got a Z30 and that's what he's been using for his uh, streaming here, here lately. So it's, it's a very, uh, it's a lot cheaper for a streaming camera than going out and buying a Z6 or Z7 or whatever. Uh, can't wait to see what you do with it, brother. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see. Roy says he'd like the ML L3 release on more Nikons too. You know what? That may be something we see here. Um, you know, Nikon's had time now to look at what people miss from DSLRs and and want in the uh, mirrorless cameras. There is a possibility that comes out in these next. The, the next wave of bodies, updated bodies. Uh, uh, someone just commented about the cost of the, the Nikon shutter. James said the Nikon shutter release is $160. You could buy, I've never had a problem with it, you could buy the Velo brand, V-E-L-L-O, and it's yeah. strictly just a shutter release. That's all it is. Not an intervalometer or anything like that, and and you can get it for eighty bucks or less. So there's your option. Hey Tim, everybody's been talking about that for a long time, built-in Bluetooth. But with all the other Bluetooth that the camera can do, is there an issue with it? I guess is how much, or is it something you can only run one device at a time or one thing at a time? But yeah, they've been talking about that for a while. The closest we got to that was a CLS system uh, with Nikon and the DSLR bodies. Um, but that required the dongle. You're absolutely right. Oh, a photo. All right. You like your Z30? Great, man. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of people that ha have picked it up now and do like it. And watching uh, D Moots and when he's on the stream, it looks fantastic. So, although I will warn people don't record 
<laughs> when you're in a very long live stream because the camera overheated, it was only because he had hit the record button. And I think it was almost an hour before it overheated. And that was in 4K. So I'm, I'm rather impressed on that. But yeah, obviously you don't have to record to uh, be in a stream or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, no, I have not seen that, Greg. That would be interesting to watch. The 800 millimeter on a Z30. <laughs> I remember a long time ago watching uh, Matt Granger put a 600 millimeter uh, on a uh, Nikon One camera. If you remember the Nikon One, the little tiny camera. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Pretty impressive, actually. Yeah. It's like, it's like the camera is like the size of a postage stamp compared to the lens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, Tim. It would be fantastic. Um, the only question is, is, you know, how do they how do they do that to make it uh, compatible with all brands? I don't know. Or is that even an issue? All flash brands, that is. Uh, let's see. So you're using your Z30 for vlogging? Evidently, it's a good camera for that. I mean, I guess there are a few missed cues that Matt Granger brought up and a couple of others, but nothing terrible. Um, the camera's still a good camera for what it was designed to be for. Um, uh, Hassan's me asked about metering modes. What is your yeah. why? It changes yeah. for me. Um, you know, if I'm shooting into dark, if it's bright sun and you're shooting into the trees or something like that, then I go, whatever it is, single point uh, metering so that the object or the, the, the subject, the bird or whatever, at least there's a chance that it's going to uh, compensate for the dark hole in the trees or whatever. But that comes with complications too, because if, if you still have all the bright sunlight outside the location of the bird, then you're going to overexpose that. So that's just a tough, tough call. But yeah, you know, I, I think it works okay. And I, I constantly switch back and forth, whatever's working for what I'm shooting. You got the, um, I mean, I usually use matrix metering and a uh, spot once in a while, but they yeah. also have one that is catered towards, um, if you're shooting, it helps protect the highlights. So mm -hmm. if I'm a lot of white birds and it's getting a little bright out, I may change the metering to uh, for that mode that tries to protect the highlights. And it, yeah. it helps a little bit. It doesn't cure the problem, right. but it does help. And, and I don't know if every Nikon camera has that mode or not. I don't remember the specific name of it, but it's, I think it's highlight priority or something like that, but uh, it um, it is on the Z9. I, I don't have any other Z cameras, so I can't comment on that. James, so I got my TC 1.4 today, but no lens to put it on. Ugh, my 800 is still on back order. I'm I'm now looking at the one to 400 gas. <laughs> All right, man. So I had the 2.0. Or the 2x converter, I had it for about four months before I got a lens that I could use it on. But I knew at the time I wanted it, and I would I would have it when I did get a lens. So I didn't buy the 70 to 200 uh, Z right away. I still haven't purchased it, but I'm going to. But the one to 400, at least I got that, and I could put my sorry my kitty cat's wanting attention over here. Um, and I got well, my wanting the ball. Yeah, we'll have to have a pet day live stream. Yeah, uh, uh, 
photographers and their pets. Well, that's what that. Hey, there you go. There's a photo session, Chuck. You say everybody's got to submit a photo of their pet. Well, if you don't have a pet, then go shoot a stray. Go shoot your friend's pet. Go shoot. Go to a there pet. A lot, of a lot of people would like to shoot their friend's pets. or <laughs> but We are talking about photographs here. Yes. Um, uh, Z30 made the top 10 sales in Japan. Yeah, it did. It certainly did. I think it was the only Nikon that made the top 10 list, wasn't it? In Japan. If I remember seeing the somebody posting that. Oh, here we go. Mechanical shutter is not available with some lenses. Hey, Rich. Thanks for that. How could I have missed that? How could you miss that? Jeffrey, you know the manual inside and out. <laughs> Uh, well, here's your Velo uh, wireless, yeah. the wireless shutter remote release. That, that thing works great, and it's cheap, and it works great. Yeah. Absolutely great. Oh, James is taking off for tonight. Have a good night, James. Hey, James. Good. Glad you dropped in for a minute, brother. Happy to see you always. Greg, Chuck, shoot astray. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, I, we're going. We're going astray. Astray. We're going astray. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, Andre uh, said that high light weighted metering is great for concert photography and is a standard in the Z6, Z62, and Z9 basically present as it's basically present as from the d5 onwards yep yep i like it and like you jeffrey at times it, it can be a burden because it will uh you'll wind up with a underexposed image just because of the setting the situation but I have shot it before too. Yeah, I mean the problem is, you know, when you when you stray from your norm, and and well, I can only speak for myself. Sometimes when I stray from the norm, I forget to switch it back, and then I'm like, why are my pictures coming out? You know, other pictures coming out uh, different than it than it normally is, and it's usually because I changed the setting for that one one off type of thing, and I forgot to switch it back. So sometimes you mess yourself up pretty good. <laughs> okay. Manila Martin likes to shoot weddings with the 24 to 120 for video. Yeah, that 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 pretty much covers everything as long as you got as long as you got enough light cuz you are at f4. You know, it's funny because I had never tried to shoot that uh the one to 400 on my Z6, Z6 II. I wonder if it's the same there. You know, I'm just, I did not know that the uh, 24 to 120 was a lens that wouldn't work on those bodies. So, uh, Manila Martin saying that, uh, the 24 to 120 is his, their favorite lens for video. It is a great video lens, I'm sure. Uh, the 1 to 400, believe it or not, is a great video lens. Yeah, <laughs> Homeland Security, I hope they understand what I say. Uh, I hear you, Greg. <laughs> you have that knock at 2 a.m., it ain't good. <laughs> hey Yaman, hate to see you go, man. But uh thanks for come dropping in. It's always good to have you here as well. Love your comments and questions and everything else. Another great individual in our community. Have a good have night. Have a great have a great day, sir. It's daytime for him. Daytime for him. Uh oh. Yeah. Time for work, maybe. Yeah, it may be. Might be. Uh, uh, 
number one. Yeah, since you're speed. talking about the Z24 to 120 lens not working on the, when you're using the mechanical shutter on a Z6 or a Z7. Two. Yeah. Not the G lens, the Z lens. And I don't own either of those bodies, so I can't answer that question. Well, this is interesting. A photo says the 1 to 300 F4 Sigma won't work on a Z6, but it works on the Z30. Hmm. Yeah. He, um, did you just answer that? Yeah. I missed part of that. Yeah. He's talking about the Z lens. Z lens. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's strange. I, I did not know that. I don't understand why, but then again, I'm not a engineer. Oh, let's see. We still got 43 people in here, and everybody asks me. You know, I still get comments or, or an email from time to time about why do your live streams go so long? People aren't going to watch it. And I'm thinking, well, you never stayed to the end, did you? Because there are obviously people watching it. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, as I said the other day, I think that it's the fact that some people don't, maybe they didn't get notified. Maybe they were busy or something. They did get notified and they just come in late and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so my uh, analytics never really talk about how many people come through the channel. It only tells me the uh, the uh, largest number present throughout the stream. So, you know, even though it's 43 right now, I don't know what the highest was, the peak was tonight. But uh, there have probably been, you know, 70, 80 people that have come through, come and gone, and some just came in. There's Mr. Mike uh, Farwell from Oregon. Hey. Hafoda, where are you at in Tennessee, sir? Wonder where he is in Tennessee. Hey, I'm all about you know meeting people, uh, you know anywhere when I'm out and about. Just to, if it's just for a few minutes or something, have a cup of coffee and talk, just to meet face to face. Um, uh, da, 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 da. You know, you're not the only one there, um, Gustavo. Uh, I used to shoot aperture priority on my DSLRs all the time, but all of a sudden with the Z9, I don't, I don't know what it is. Why did I go to manual? I'm trying to think of why, but I pretty much stay in manual mode. Well, when 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 I had my D850, well, before I moved down here, I was shooting mostly. Uh, landscapes seascapes that kind of stuff so you know typically you know your aperture is more important than your shutter speed and i always shot aperture priority and then when i got into birding i found the best mode was to be in manual mode but with the auto iso feature engaged so i set my set my f-stop to what i want set my shutter speed to what i want and then I let the ISO float to whatever it is, and I keep an eye on it. And if it's if it's higher than I want it to be, then I adjust either the f-stop or the shutter speed to, to lower the ISO. But for the most part, I mean, I just I let the ISO do what the ISO wants to do. And with with our noise reduction software that you can use, I mean, I, I rarely have a problem. Hey, Tim. <laughs> yeah, she's a big supporter of this. Uh, you know, she said she knows I love photography and uh, I got all the stuff. I've been collecting stuff for the studio to do this more. And yeah, she supports me 100%. You know, I, I love my bride. She takes care of me. Always looking out for me. A photo in Selmer, McNary County. Okay, I was just wondering. I didn't know if you were in here. I'll be down the Nashville area, more up towards Fort Campbell. I'll be up there, really, but uh, close enough to Nashville. I was just asking, see who's close to Nashville or in Nashville or whatever. Thought I might try to do a, a 
near Jackson. Oh, that's that's okay. Yep. All right. I knew of Selmer, but I didn't know it was out that way near Jackson. That's that's a good ride. Okay. Uh, Joe, thanks for dropping in, man. Appreciate you being in here. Hope to see you again. Hey, everybody, while I have a moment here, everybody remember, anybody that wants to participate in the photo review, it's not a critique. It's a photo review for people to show what they've been shooting. I don't care if it was eight years ago, 10 years ago, 40 years ago, or yesterday. It doesn't matter to me. Just show off something. If you want to show off something that you've done, a photo, it can be about anything. We're going to do that next Saturday night, September 3rd. That's our next photo review. We're going to do it the first Saturday of every month for as long as people want to do it. Uh, but all you have to do is send, send your photo to me and I'm going to sell them later if they're real good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Send your photo to me at the address or the email address here. Uh, make sure that it's 2048 on the long side, 2048 picks on the long side. And just put in the, the uh, email, put at the top there. Uh, this is for the photo review, Saturday photo review. And uh, I'll get it put in the folder. And then next Saturday night, we'll just have a good time going through photos. Let everybody have their moment of uh, fame with their photo doesn't have to be a perfect photo i don't care if you're happy with it and you want to share it with people then we'll do it so just wanted to get that out there before you took off joe but uh hey thanks again for being in here and now everybody got another shot at the photo review i got that plug in all right uh uh bu -bu -bu -bu. So Briar's talking about the uh, 1.4. He's, he's amazed at how sharp it is with the uh, TC on the lens. And, of course, uh, Roy's talking about, yeah, the Z1, Z1.4 is probably one of the best TCs ever made, but I'm probably biased against them except for on primes. Yeah, I, you know, I'm even happy with the 2X on my 1 to 400. Um, it takes a little more work, but I'm happy with the results from it. And, you know, being a cheater, like I am, if I have to bump up the, you know, the shutters, shutter speed, and I get a little noise in the photo, I'm happy with third party software now and how well it does to eliminate that. So Gustavo saying the shutter, I'm sorry, the histogram and the EVF bigger advantage. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you want to take the time, the one thing about using the uh, highlight protection is that you don't have to think about it, but you may have other problems that you create that you have to fix later. Um, wow, man. Shooting a music video. Brother, you got to you got to let us know what you do. You got to tell us about what you do. Love to see uh, some of your work. Sneak sneak a short clip in on Chuck's show or something. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> this is this is kind of funny here. Rich says, funny we use some type of auto setting and then buy a more expensive camera and stop using its brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh well, I'll, I'll tell you that when you when you uh, grab an old camera that doesn't have any auto features, you know, then you then you then you got to sit there and say, oh, okay, do I got to? Uh, here's my meter reading. Now, do I, uh, you know, adjust one of one of, one of my settings to uh, knock the exposure down or up a stop, depending on your lighting conditions? It makes you think more, makes you use your brain in a way you haven't used it in a while. You know, uh, Mozman made this comment too a while back, talking about when I rewatch the stream, I want I want to comment to someone, but I can't. Uh, you know, again, what you're saying is that we're, we're on the right track here because I think we all watch videos and we want to comment. 
we have to just comment in the comment section only to be never heard from or, you know ever heard so i know it is kind of funny i guess maybe it's just you get used to it being a live stream and then you watch it and replay uh well it's kind of like sometimes if you're watching say you're watching jeopardy or something and you know the answer and the other and the person on the tv struggling and you're you're yelling at the tv how can you not know this this is the answer <laughs> All right, Rich. Yeah, man. Just uh, send a photo of your choosing and uh, I'll put it in the group and Saturday night, next Saturday night, we'll go through them all. Have a good time like we did last time. I didn't know everybody was going to enjoy it that much. So this is this is you guys deciding you wanted to do it more. So there we go. Uh, Roy, why doesn't this surprise me, Roy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> why doesn't that surprise me that you have at least uh, a dozen tcs version, version two version three yeah <laughs> uh, mm. i'll tell you i've been doing research on leica cameras and lenses and i'll tell you you talk about a company that really mucked things up when it came to lenses my god so many different variables with their lenses especially when they came out with the r mount you know they got cam one cam two cam three r uh our own rom all this other stuff i mean you got to be a scientist to figure out what lens you, you would buy to work with what camera body yeah Boy, really muck you know there's a lot to be said for nikon not having changed their mount for so long you look at some of these other brands and they, they seem like every, you know, every 10 years, every five years, they change something on the mount. You know, Roy, you don't have to, <clears throat> you, you don't have to uh, shoot something new unless you just want to, you know, I'm sure you've got a couple of photos laying around that you've taken over the 30, 40 years. <laughs> I'm sure you've got something that you could share. And, and again, it doesn't matter when you took it, but if you want to take something new, that's fine too. Hey, here we go. This is a, let's a, answer Bob's question here. Bob's needing some help here. Uh, can anybody recommend a good pocket camera? I need to pack light and I'm on a limited budget. Well, you could, I, I owned a, uh, Panasonic Lumix camera, you know, that had the, the wide and the telly, you know, the lever on the, on the camera built in zoom or whatever, depends on what, what, what you need for megapixels, what you're shooting, that type of thing. But really the only thing that's going to be small is going to be one of those, uh, with a, either a fixed lens, a small fixed lens camera, or one with a, uh, with an extended zoom uh in that in that family of camera i mean you know uh i think every every manufacturer has a small camera for the most part but uh lumix had quite a few models back in the day i'm not so sure about now but so bob you're talking about if you're talking about literally put it in your pocket i think you're down to a fixed lens a camera yeah um but if you just mean a very small easy to carry other you know uh, in a bag or something like that uh canon nikon and sony right now and and so many others that people are mentioning here um you know they have a, a smaller form factor camera and mirrorless now uh and they're they're cheaper than obviously the the, the higher end models uh but you know nikon just uh, dropped the uh, z30 doesn't have a viewfinder, but if you don't mind that, if you just, you know, just looking at the screen on the back to take the photo. Uh, so it does make it a bit smaller because there's no viewfinder on top. Uh, Canon just released the R10. And I, I've heard, you know, people talk about how good it is. Uh, and Sony still has models that are still uh, available. Uh, but somebody just said, Andre just said Nikon cool picks. And I would agree. It's, it's a, it's a good camera, nothing wrong with it. But, uh, since everybody moved away from DSLRs, 
it's taken a bit to come back. I, I don't know if we're going to see pocket cameras from any of the makers anymore, but I don't know if that helps you or not. Okay. I mean, you also have, uh, it wouldn't be pocket size, but like Chuck said, <clears throat> excuse me, like Chuck said, it would be small. You could get a, um, gee, I had a, I had a Panasonic, uh, camera that was, uh, a micro four thirds uh, mirrorless, uh, and, and that was uh, with two kit lenses, and I got it at B and H for like five hundred bucks. Um, so it, it all depends on you know partly your budget and if you're willing to carry a small a small bag. So I, I was just going to bring that up, Roy. Um, if you go back to uh, pocket size cameras, fixed lens cameras, uh, mentioned, uh, the, uh, Panasonic's, the Nikon cool picks and all those. I don't know that those will compete with, a, one of the newer smartphones. Uh, it is a separate camera, so you're not shooting on your cell phone or whatever, if that's an issue. And, and I don't want to downplay, uh, or I don't want to, make everybody believe that the camera smartphones are, you know, putting cameras out of business. But I mean, there's some truth to that when you're talking about older generation cameras, uh, the, these smartphones today, you know, iPhones are just and the Samsung are just incredible for photos under good light and everything else. But I think you have the same thing with those, uh, cool picks cameras and other fixed lens cameras. I don't know that you get any great benefit from using it over a, an iPhone or a whatever. Hassan said, I like a T. That might be a bit out of his range. TL2, you can use L mount APS-C, but I think he wants fixed lens, Hassan, so that it literally tucks in your shirt pocket. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, you know, I don't know. That's a good question, Gustavo. Does anybody make uh, uh, mirrorless cameras with retractable lenses anymore? If you guys know of a model out there, you know, throw it in the mix here. I know that Nikon was going to do that with that, those, I can't remember those bodies. They had three different bodies you could choose from. Um, and they advertised it and everything else. A lot of people were interested in it. And then they dropped the whole idea. What was what were those cameras? Anybody remember? It's been about. Well, you're talking about the ones that we're going to replace. Uh, we're supposedly going to be like the uh, GoPros. No, no, they this was uh, full fledged cameras, but they uh, there were three of them, and they had different focal lengths for each yeah. one and things like that. Keystone, Tim, I don't remember. Of course, it's a moot point right now, but, you know, I think that those, uh, no, not the key mission. I'm trying to think of the name of them. Um, tag on it. Uh, yeah, that, that's absolutely true, Roy. Uh, have you considered a GoPro? Uh, I, I don't know the the ease of use might, not, it might not be as, uh, easy to use a GoPro and, you know, for that, obviously you get some great video because those things are doing great. Yeah. You know, here's another suggestion. The Lumix, uh, ZS 70. Is that still in production? Hassan? I don't know. Wish we'd give you a real easy answer. <clears throat> It'll be mirrorless either. Those will probably be the, uh, just digital SLRs, but point and shoot. Um, yeah, the LRs with smaller, bigger sensor sizes than most cameras, but still they won't be, they won't necessarily be APS-C. They might be smaller than that. Um, 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 um John, <clears throat> give me an idea of price for, for that, for that setup. I'm just curious myself. Okay, they're used. Okay. Yeah, DL series. That was it. 
the DL series. Not that it matters now because they never, well, I don't know if they ever went into production, but they never sold and Nikon never offered it. But the, the lead up to uh, those cameras was pretty remarkable. I, I like the specs of them. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was canceled. I I had bought. I'm on B and H's site right now. I had bought um, a Panasonic Lumix GX85 mirrorless camera with a 12 to 32 millimeter and a 45 to 150 lens, and you can get it with a with a bag and everything and a memory card for 598 bucks right now, 200 dollars off at B and H if you want to spend that much money. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the um, you have a picture of it up. You, you, you could share your screen. Maybe it's big enough that we could, you know, see it. Maybe that helps him. Yeah. Let me see if I can, um, let's see. What do I got to hit to share the screen here? I forget. It's one of the buttons down there on restream. <clears throat> Uh, it's probably uh, going to tell you you don't have permission. It's not your computer. You don't get to decide what it does. All right, let's see what we got here. So, whoops. So here it is right here. So click on it, and then, you know, you can go to photos of the product, and we'll probably get a, bit, a bigger... Oh, Look yeah. at it. Yeah, that's pretty small. That's a pancake lens. That's, is, that's, it, that's a nice camera. I mean, I had it and, and I liked it. But, you know, when I when I went this? to my Z9, I had to trade in some my D850 and a few things to be able to help buy it. And this was one of the things I sacrificed. But it's a good camera. How many megapixels is it, Jeffrey? Um, da, 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 da. let's see. <laughs> Bob saying sold. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, Bob. Let's see what we got. Micro, it's a micro four thirds camera. It does 4K video, 30 and 24 frames per second, and full HD 1080p. And let's see. Yeah does eight megapixel stills at 30 frames per second and it's uh let's see i'm just trying to see what the let me go to the specs that's what i was going to say or suggest go to the specs uh it's uh it's a uh, 16 megapixel camera okay so there you go uh uh, so Bob. for a portable camera that you can carry around, 16 megapixels is, I mean, heck, we used to sh shoot with pro cameras that were 12. Well, the D4 was 16 megapixels, and that's a fantastic camera still today. People talk about it. D4, D4S, 16 megapixel. I mean, th this is a great camera for the money. I mean, I owned it. I used it. And, uh, you know, I, I liked it quite a bit. And you, and well, you can't for the money. I mean, the lenses aren't going to be the fastest lenses in the world. There are going to be variable aperture, like the 12 to 32 says it's an F3, 5 to 5, 6. The 45 to 150 is an F4 to 5, 6. But, you know, that's not horrible. No, no. And it, it has optical image stabilization in the lens. Uh, so you have image stabilization. You're going to get a camera bag. You're going to get a memory card. You're going to get a filter. You're going to get the camera and two lenses and under 600 bucks. But that's just not that I'm getting a commission from B and H. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's somebody just said that's not really pocket. You're not going to put it in your shirt pocket, but with that, uh, you could put it in your pocket. I'll tell yeah. you that jacket pocket you could put it in a jacket pocket or uh or a uh windbreaker pocket it'll fit depending so, on the lens you put on you put the longer lens on maybe not you put the 12 to 32 which you can see from the pictures on the camera that doesn't stick out very far yeah 
So you could put that in a, in a jacket pocket with that particular lens. You go and you put the longer one on, no. It's nice that it's a kit with two lenses, though. Yeah. So, hey, hey Jeffrey, you want to yeah. – uh, let me throw this up here. You want to uh, search their site for the ZS100, Lumix ZS100. And by the way, uh, if you're reading the comments, I, I hope you noticed, uh, Bob, Talking about Lumix Ibis, you know, in body stabilization is one of the best. ZS100 is $497, $100 off. But, you know, hey, for what? You're paying an extra 100 bucks, you're getting two lenses. Here you're getting a 20 megapixel camera uh, with a, that's a 25 to 250 millimeter. Uh, the 35 millimeter equivalent is a 25 to 250. And it's basically four, almost five hundred bucks. So, how much? What's the size though? Is it is it a, a smaller camera to carry? I think that's well, it. Not with the long lens, but with the well, smaller short lens. When when the lens is collapsed, it's it's it is smaller. But the other one is not a huge camera. Oh, okay. So that's the uh, fixed. When the lens, lens collapsed, it'll it, you know it's still going to be. It's still probably going to be a little big to put in a shirt pocket. It's still going to be a, ja a jacket pocket type of thing either way. So well, there you go, Bob. Do you, do you write down the models, go to B and H and then you can just uh, go through them and look at all the uh, reviews from people and see what fits your needs, man. Yep. You know, comp compare the sensor sizes. Um and, and like I said, if it's just something to have in your car, so if you see something and you don't miss it or you're you're just walking through the woods with the kids or taking a walk uh, in your neighborhood and you want to have something on you, then you don't necessarily need to have a camera with interchangeable lenses. You know, this, something like this might be perfectly fine. But if you want something that you can buy different lenses and they do make higher end glass for that GX85 model, uh, that's uh, faster glass. Um, and then I think was I think the Lumix lenses share a platform. I think I think Olympus lenses will work on a Lumix camera and the other way around. but you'd, you'd have to look that up. but there is some compatibility. Well, let's, let, let's not overwhelm Bob. He's not a, a camera. <laughs> yeah, aficionado. I don't want to try his brain. I'll, I'll get out of this now. I think he's seen enough to confuse him no. for a while. Yeah, what I was going to say to him is, you know, check it out, Bob. You you can look. They have plenty of photos you can look at as well, and you find something that fits whatever uh, you want to carry it in, man. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people in there talking about the Lumix, so absolutely, that may be the place to start. John talked about the Z50. I would say check that out. I think it's going to be a little bit larger than the Lumix camera, but I I'm not sure. You know, the Z50, but it's going to cost you a little bit more. So it all depends on your budget and, you know, the, I think the size of the body and, and budget. So check it out. Uh, yeah. Hey, and don't forget, you, you know, you have advisors at B and H, you know, you, you write down what's important to you and what you want. And you talk to an advisor at B and H and they'll help you. They'll give you a number of choices. Yep. Beyond, beyond what we're just talking about i mean there, there's there's a lot of other stuff out there too so hey brother i hope it helps you out yeah olympus lumix in, in four thirds uh compatible but not in all areas such as focusing in okay. linearity okay all right hey uh albert i saw your comment we can make that happen, brother. We, we, we can get you up and running. If you got all the stuff, uh, we're going to have to talk this, uh, next week and, uh, talk about getting you up and running for your streaming. All right. All right, folks, we're past the, uh, midnight hour. So I think I am going to wrap it up here before long. We still have people coming in and I know why too. I mean, some people, you know, I would guess a lot of folks are tuning in from elsewhere where it's maybe morning now uh, instead of in the middle of the night. And I think it's a great thing. I wish we I could stay longer, but then again, I have the Wednesday uh, live stream for the, it, which may be more convenient for a lot of people. So, 
All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, 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 um. All right. Check other here. Got it. All right. Okay, folks. You know, we're here every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, whatever that equates to in your portion of the world. We're in here every Wednesday uh, at 12 p.m. noon Eastern time. And however that equates to your world. I know for the European folks, the Wednesday afternoon here chat is uh, better because of the time frame that you're uh, operating in, it makes it a whole lot more convenient. Uh, so that's every Wednesday, whether there's a reminder or not, every Wednesday, unless I put out a reminder saying we're not going to have a live stream, which doesn't, uh, that isn't going to happen very often. However, in a couple of weeks when I'm traveling, I'm carrying my remote uh, set up so I can go live. And uh, I just won't have this, this wonderful audio. <laughs> but we will be going live while I'm on the road, too. And I may not be on as long for those live streams, but definitely going to keep it going. So every Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern, every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll join us on one or the other or both. And, uh, you know, again, this is the community that you guys built and we're here to talk about all things, cameras, photography, and everything else. And in three hours or more, we typically cover everything over and over again. So, uh, I really appreciate everybody, everybody being in here. Uh, Bob is nice to see you tonight. I hope we helped you out, man. At least we gave you something to look at. Thanks. Uh, Arg Zap, I appreciate that. Uh, have your twin take over, Greg says. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I need I need to clone myself. I need to find a doppelganger. There you go. Uh, I, I really appreciate Jeff being in here tonight, as always, Jeffrey. And I want you guys to make sure you go out and check out his. Uh, if you haven't, check out his YouTube channel, Selective Imagery. And some great bird photography and other things that he happens by when he's out shooting. Um, yeah, don't forget to submit your photos. I'll put that out again. Uh, we're going to have a photo review next Saturday night, again, beginning at 9 p.m. Uh, we're not critiquing photos. We're not going to be those, uh, those stuffy photographers that just want to run everybody down so maybe they sound important or look better. No, this is just uh, show some of your work, whatever it is, you know, a, a long time ago, recently, whatever it is, you get to choose the photo you send in, but send the, send me a photo at, uh, at my email address here. You send a photo, just make sure it's uh 2048 picks on the long side, 2048 on the long side. And that gives us a little room to zoom and look at things because somebody will always say, can you zoom in here? Can you zoom in there? And we'll definitely do that. But you send your photo in just uh, in the uh, in the email, uh, title it uh, Saturday Night Review. And uh, I'm going to gather them all up in one uh, folder like I did last time, open it all up in ACR. So it's really easy to move between photos and uh there you go. If you, by all means, if you'll be here when your photo comes up on the screen, you're welcome to talk about it in the chat, or you can talk about it. Uh, you can call in. I'll have the number open, the phone ready to go. You can call in and talk to us about it. Uh, depending on how many photos we get, last time I think we had about thirty photos or something like that. Jeff, you remember? Yeah, I think it was a little over 30, and, and we'll, we're going to have to try to do a little, uh, I don't know, stopwatch type activity. I yeah. Think to sure we, we get to see everybody's, depending mm -hmm. on how many Chuck gets. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that way we can get through them enough, uh, quick, quick enough. I say quick enough, but that's three hours worth of photos, at least 30, because we seem to we seem to uh, spend a little more time than we expect to for this go around. We'd like to keep it around six minutes for each photo, but people are going to send in photos that we just want to talk about for forever. And Jeffrey's going to hold my feet to the fire though, so that we don't spend too much time on, on any given photo. All right. Hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of the weekend. 
hope to see everybody or uh, if you can't make it i understand that but wednesday at the next uh, live stream i thank everybody for their participation in the chat everything ran very nice and smooth tonight i really appreciate that and uh i don't know that that's all i have to say jeffrey you no i, I think tonight was really good uh we touched on a lot of different subjects and hopefully help people out with some things and at least pointed them in a direction they can uh, get some information on. And, hey, that's what it's all about, sharing information, picking everybody's uh, each other's brains and, and trying to come up with a solution to each of our problems. So photography problems. <laughs> yes, yes, photography problems. We are uh, not psychiatrists <laughs> no no not at all not at all i don't want to be in the therapy game that's no. what my that's what my stepdaughter does <laughs> i'll stay away from that all right guys again or guys and gals i wish we had a whole lot more uh ladies that wanted to join us to talk about photography i'm it, i'm not opposed to it at all i actually encourage it if you know some female photographers that like to get in a group and talk uh, about uh photography let them know about us We'd love to see some more uh females uh, joining our our stream as well all right guys on your way out if you haven't i just encourage you to drop a like it's very motivating for me and you know again i'm not in it for uh the money or fame i'm just in it to have fun and you guys make it fun all right and if you're new here and you haven't been here before if you enjoyed it well, there are nights that are more enjoyable, so don't let this one hold you back. But if, if you like it and you like being around a photography community or being a part of a community, and we talk about all brands or we'll talk about all brands and everything else. I mean, the sky's the limit in here pretty much. As long as it's not politics or attacking someone, we're, we're good to go. All right. That's it, Jeffrey. I think that's it. Did I hit everything? You hit everything. Yep. All right, brother. Again, thanks, Jeffrey. It's always good having you in here, man. You keep oh, me straight. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, yeah, folks. I appreciate it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, people. Again, have a wonderful night. If it's night where you're at, have a wonderful day. If it's day where you're at, we'll see you guys again Wednesday for those that join us. And don't forget about the photo review. We'll be doing that next Saturday night. Thanks. And that's it. That's all I got. God bless you all until I see you again.